Hello, it's morning news on New Day from the News Hub at Adisawe in Accra. I am Anthony Jackson. Coming up this morning. The Inspector General of Police, Daniela Santia Pietu, faces possible contempt charge for the police administration's failure to carry out a court order to grant Gregory a focal bail. And the Director of the Bureau of National Investigations, BNI, Rashid Seydu Inusa, relieved of his post. Now pressure mounts for the prosecution of former Minister of State Roxin Bukhari over bribery allegations. And then business Tamale Baker Association begin a two-day strike over increase in prices of ingredients used in bread making. On the foreign front, Venezuelan opposition leader calls for a military uprising to oust President Nicolas Maduro as violence breaks out in capital. Let's start from the Labour front. The Civil and Local Government Staff Association, CLOSAC, has called for the immediate resignation of the Auditor General Daniel Domilevo at a news conference addressed by its Executive Secretary Isaac Bampo Addo. The association accused the Auditor General of awarding consultancy contracts on payroll fraud in the public service, compromising the biodata of its members. The association cited Article 187 of the Constitution, which mandates the Auditor General to conduct external auditing instead of internal auditing. The situation, according to Clocksack, has affected the work of some of its members at the audit service. Executive Secretary of the association, Isaac Bampuado, called for the immediate resignation. If you'll be given a role to perform, and you, you will not perform that role, and you think some of this role is better for you, then you, you, you don't warrant to be where you are. You must get out, resign honorably. Unless somebody who can perform that role, do it. Because it's for the good of all of us. It's for Ghanaians. It's not what you think, ah, this is what I want to do, so I'm going to do it. There are rules and regulations. He again expressed concern over the Auditor General supervising the award of contracts to deal with payroll fraud to consultants. Isaac Bampuado argued that such a move has compromised the biodata of its members, creating job insecurity. These consultancies are still running, and these are vital public information that are out there. And what's the end result? Every morning, you, they will wake you up with an SMS message, come and collect loan. Where did they get these personal details from? It's from these consultants. And it's against the Data Protection Act. He said the association would petition other key stakeholders, including the Civil Service Council and the Public Services Commission, to deal with the matter. Every unit has got a manager over there who is supposed to verify. So if these managers are not being held responsible, and then you now want to go and perform that fashion, who is going to hold you responsible? And the director of the Bureau of National Investigations, BNI, Rashid Seydou Inusa, has been relieved of his post. He has been at post for barely a year, having taken over from his predecessor, Akusia Pia, barely a year ago. It is still unclear what necessitated his removal, as there are conflicting reports what the reasons might be. Some have suggested he was asked to proceed on leave. However, reports picked up by TV3 indicate the director was sacked due to recent security lapses and lack of coordination. Already there are conflicting reports regarding his removal. His deputy has been asked to take over from him. <coughs> An Inspector General of Police, David Asante Pietu, faces possible contempt charge for the failure, for the police's failure to grant Gregory Afoko bail. This follows a contempt application filed at the High Court by family of Gregory Afoko, who is standing trial for the murder of former Upper East Regional Chairman of the MPP, Adams Mahama. 
The Criminal Division of the Accra High Court on March 14 granted bail to Gregory Afoko, one of the accused persons in the murder of the Upper East Regional Chairman of the New Patriotic Party NPP, Adam Smahama, in 2015. He was admitted to bail in the sum of 500,000 cities with two sureties, one of which must be justified. The High Court, presided over by Justice George Bwedi, also ordered him to report to the Criminal Investigations Department, CID of the Ghana Police Service, every two weeks. This was, however, challenged by the Attorney General, but the Court of Appeal on April 15 threw out a suit filed by the AG's department for a stay of execution. It was the second time the Attorney General had made an attempt to stop the bill granted the suspect, but lost after the first one on Friday, March 22, was thrown out by the High Court presided over by Justice George Bwedi. After meeting the bill conditions, the police have refused to release him. This has resulted in the family filing a contempt application at the High Court to compel the CID to carry out the court order. The trial of Gregory Afoko was nearing completion after four years, but on January 28, 2019, the AG filed a nolly prosequa to discontinue the trial following the arrest of the other suspect, Asab Kialangdi, who had been on the run since the incident occurred in 2015. Afoku and Alangdi were then put before the Accra Central District Court on provisional charges of conspiracy to commit murder and murder for committal proceedings, which are a prelude to the trial at the High Court. And now President Kufuado says the reports by the Ayawaso West Wagon Commission ought to be thoroughly studied for governments not to abuse public space on its recommendations. At a meeting with the Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition at the Jubilee House, the president said government is determined to deal with the phenomenon of kidnapping in the country. The meeting is a second between the Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition and the president to discuss issues of national concern. Led by Chairman Nana Osei Bonsu, the coalition called for national commitment towards the implementation of the National Anti-Corruption Action Plan to assist in dealing with corruption. It thus appears the zeal to address the canker of corruption must move on from you to every member of your team. Recent comments by special prosecutor, by the special prosecutor on his frustration by some government appointees and the police CID does not speak well to the consented efforts and collaboration needed among stakeholders in addressing corruption. The coalition suggested that the president institutes a sanction regime that will compel MMDAs and the MDAs to mainstream and integrate the anti-corruption action plan in the activities, a recommendation the president agreed with. The group suggested all recommendations by the Commission of Enquiry be made public. Citizens should not be treated to snippets of leaked information whilst the report is kept by government. In fact, it is in the best interest of government to maintain the confidence of the people by opening up to them. But President Akufuado insisted recommendation particularly that of the Ayawaso West Wagon disturbances must be thoroughly studied. The provisions involved in um, the response of a government to a commission of inquiry in our country, it, it's there in black and white. A certain amount of period is given by the Constitution. First of all, either to publish or not publish. And when you publish, you do a white paper. The considerations that went into this Ayawasu short commission are very grave. Some of them have very far-reaching implications for the security of our nation. And therefore, to me, I think I would rather err on the side of caution, have a thorough study which is being undertaken. Another meeting between the president and the coalition is expected to take place before the end of the year. 
and our government is at the final stage of procuring arms and ammunition for the Ghana Immigration Service to boost its operations and enhance security at the country's borders. The Vice President, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, who made this known at a graduation ceremony at a Sinfosu in the central region, reiterated government's commitment to resource all security services to fight crime. The Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Baumia, said the government will not be complacent in the management of the country's security, thus working to ensure the safety of citizens. The government, the added, is ensuring the full implementation of the Immigration Services Act 2016, Act 908, which is aimed at injecting more efficiency and effectiveness into the service. Dr. Mohamed Baumia urged officers to eschew all forms of corrupt practices and exhibit high levels of integrity in the discharge of their duties. More than 300 office cadets who undertook a nine-month course at the Ghana Immigration Service Academy passed out as senior officers. The vice president also commissioned some projects including a 221 capacity hostel, a 300 capacity lecture hall and a modern drill square. Now, pressure is mounting on government and the police to prosecute former Minister of State Roxin Bukhari for obstructing justice. The former Upper East Regional Minister resigned on Monday, April 29th after a tape implicating him in a move to prevent a journalist from publishing a story against a judge and a Chinese mining company in 2018 leaked. An embattled minister with his stewardship dented over a bribery allegation in a leaked tape. He, however, denied it, vowing to protect his image. Pressure was brought to bear on him with many calling for his head in the wake of the Chinese being reported to be leading foreign invasion of lands for illegal mining. The minister finally resigned his position on Monday night by the minority in parliament is not enthused. Look, I am reliable to find whether he was pushed or he jumped. At this point, it's immaterial for me. The most important thing is that is there is nothing enough. Clearly, and I say no, it's a big no, it is not. Why? Why? If somebody has committed a crime, we just leave him of his public office and go home and ask him, pat his back and ask him to go and see no more. So what should happen? There are acts that infringe the laws of this country. Bribery and corruption, are they not infringements of our criminal code? And so if anybody engages in those acts, we ask him to go home. What is the next step? That People are languishing in jail for even smaller offenses. Sagnarugu Member of Parliament, ABA Fuseni, warns government to pursue the case. All his appointees against whom serious allegations have been made and evidence presented. He will sweep it under the carpet and the president will be the same person to clear those people of corrupt acts. The MPP member of parliament for Adenta and the communications director of the party, Yao Boabinga, somewhat says his resignation from government is a good sign, but the state security apparatus must not let the matter die. Well, our parliament will not debate the vigilante bill brought under a certificate of urgency after the House was recalled from break. Now, Chairman of the Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee says the committee is meeting stakeholders, including the vigilante groups. A day before parliament rose for recess, government under a certificate of urgency stomped the House with the vigilantism and related offences bill 2019 for possible passage a heated debate ensued between both sides of the house with the committee agreeing the bill be sent for further consultation weeks after the committee started its work much work still exists to be done ben abdallah banda says the committee is open to meeting every stakeholder you cannot deal very decisively with vigilantism bill by I mean, sidestepping the political parties or sidestepping religious groups and sidestepping other interested opinion leaders. The names of some of the groups have been mentioned in the memoranda. Do you intend to give them audience as well? The Kandahar Boys, the Hawks, uh, the Delta Force. Do you intend to equally meet them and have deliberations? We surely, we will surely do that because they are also part and parcel of the. Uh, of the of the of the stakeholder engagement we will meet some of them we may meet some of them but not not all of them 
President Akufado meeting the anti-corruption coalition expressed concern on the slow pace of work on the bill. Ranking member Inusa Fuseni, however, disagreed. The president is out of touch. He doesn't know exactly what uh, that's what I've always been saying. In fact, we need to interrogate governors very well in this country. The president said that. He doesn't know that in parliament we are not considering the vigilantism bill. There's no slow pace. It's not even on the radar. There's no pace at all. The vigilantism bill has been postponed. Let's over to the eastern region where developmental agenda of the Insawamid regime municipal assembly is impeded due to the, its inability to mobilize enough revenue. Municipal Chief Executive Isaac Wabin expressed worry about the development but said the assembly has plans to reverse the trend. Aduadri municipality in the eastern region is one of the densely populated municipal assemblies. The Assembly's effort to build a modern market center for the area was thwarted by the non-availability of land. Speaking at the ARC Development Foundation, a non-governmental organization town hall meeting to demand transparency and accountability, the MCE said the Assembly has put measures in place to ensure the development of the area. Yeah, my major challenge so far is in sound market. During the market days, the kind of congestion we see or experience over here is, is too much. Our problem is getting a land. I traveled to South Africa to bring investors. The investors came in here, but they saw the land to be small. So now we are entreating all the chiefs and elders within our locality to help us get a new land so that we can put up a modern market for them. The town hall meeting is expected to equip civil society with skills to demand transparency and accountability. But our government is preaching about Ghana beyond aid and all the donors there, they are supporting the government, they are all moving up because of their middle income status. So as a citizen, we have to help the Asamu to generate a lot of revenue for developmental projects. Because the Asamu have a lot of potentials in the municipality here. But looking at the presentation, the target uh, the budget officer told that they can generate three times of that, but citizens, they are not willing to pay. Mm -hmm. So we are taking it upon ourselves to send the, uh, the citizen members to know their rights so that they can pay their tax towards the Asamo. Executive Director of ARC Development Foundation, Emmanuel Minta, said it's imperative for citizens, traditional heads and society groups to build consensus and form strategic alliances on local economic development. He stressed the assembly has been ripped of revenue through property rate collection due to misconception of the residents. We'll stay in Sawama while longer as a heavy duty vehicle assembly plant has been commissioned under the One District, One Factory policy program. The facility is a collaboration between government and the management of Zonda Technology Ghana Limited. Minister of State at the Office of the President, Brian E. Champo, commended the company for contributing positively to the automobile industry. He said, government had extensively collaborated and cooperated with management of Zonda Technology to partner the one district, one factory to build a multi-million dollar assembly plant to create jobs. The one district, one fa factory is aimed at establishing one factory or enterprise in each of our 216 districts, not by government, but encouraging private persons and giving, setting up the environment for them to be able to set up the industry, not government building factories in districts. Chief Executive Officer of Zonda Technology Ghana Limited, Yang Yang, said the objective is to ensure many young Ghanaians become gainfully employed. Today, I wish to inform you that Zonda has activated part of its assemble plant and some of the aforementioned vehicles and equipment are being manufactured in Ghana with abundant spare parts. She stressed that the company will provide tailored services to numerous industries across the country. Now, bread consumers in the Tamale Metropolis will, from today, May 1, 2019, pay more for the bread they consume. This follows a two-day strike by the Bread Bakers Association in Tamale over increase in prices of ingredients used in bread making. Here's a report by Christopher Amwako. 
there was total shortage of bread in the Tamale metropolis Tuesday morning. Bakers and vendors had their shops locked with inscriptions of no bread, leaving consumers stranded. The strike, according to members of the association, is to prepare consumers for an upward adjustment in prices. They say the increase is as a result of hikes in the price of flour, sugar, butter, gas and other commodities used in the business. Available market prices uh, for bread ingredients uh, have increased uh, drastically. Flour, somewhere in November 2018, December 2018 was around 135 Ghana cities per 50 kg. Um, currently, as we speak, um, the current price is around 165 Ghana cities. And uh, for about three years now, we've not experienced any increase in uh, bread prices and uh, it's affecting our businesses. Consumer Umar Al Hassan expressed his frustrations as a result of the strike. This is some international news now. Venezuelan opposition leader calls for a military uprising to oust President Nicolas Mudaro as violence breaks out in the capital, Caracas. But well, that's it for news for this morning. My name is Anthony Jackson. New Day returns shortly after this break. When perhaps the president is spoken and left uh, the podium, we will be telling you what's happening at the Black Star Square where workers are marking this year's uh, May Day celebration. We're told that it's on the theme about pensions. Mm -hmm. Charlie John, it's a huge one. It is. Me. Yesterday, the national and uh, the snitch says, well, we don't cheat pensioners. Oh, but right, that's for the right, pensioner right. to that's say uh, yeah, that, look, I'm happy or I'm not happy. Yeah, exactly. You point. know, that's yeah. for the pensioner to say, mm -hmm. I am happy or I'm not happy. It's not yeah. for snitch to say, you know, in the very same way, they are saying that the Auditor General is now doing internal auditing mm. as opposed to its original function of doing external auditing. They are also, you know, trying to be the judge in their own court and say that they don't cheat pensioners and pensioners are getting what is due them. But the people are not happy. The point... So you, the, you should be worried. The, the point actually is that, it, for me, the, the process is, is, is what is worrying, okay? Mm. Even though they've tried as much as they can to make it as simple as possible, but right. what pensioners go through in mm. situations where w some companies do not actually <coughs> pay their uh, <coughs> some contributions Sorry. and the workers don't get to know mm. until there's an issue and they leave office before they get to know that their contributions have been, yeah. been paid. For me, that is what is worrying. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yes, you might not be cheating, uh, directly cheating yeah. pensioners, but in a way, you're making life uncomfortable for them exactly. due to some one or two some things, things yeah. that indirectly uh, they go through well while accessing their pensions i mean assuming that an old man 80 years having to move all the way to a district capital to access mm. uh, his or her pensions right. it's not, not not exciting not exciting at all and sometimes i mean you would wonder how much of it and mm. and the part that really really uh, gets to me is the fact that you will have people who are working mm. um their employers are not paying their their snit contributions but then nobody raises any alarm about it. Yeah. But to the worker, because it's checked a couple of times, he assumes or believes that it's well, paid. it's being paid. Mm. Now, there's somebody at the SNIT office who's supposed to be ensuring that all employers pay their SNIT uh, you know, contributions. Mm. Then you retire only to be told that, well, between mm. period A and period you, C, you, 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 your employers did not pay it and that you should have ensured that it was done. Mm. Or if there's a mistake in your... Uh, SNIT serial number, they will tell you that. And, and those things really, really get to me. Mm -hmm. I believe that customer service is important. If it is your job to ensure that SNIT contributions are paid for all workers, you must ensure a consistency. You must have a monetary evaluation team who must ensure. I mean, it will really, really hurt to work for somebody for 37 years only to be told that, well, they paid 10 years and the rest of the 27 years were not paid. Not it, paid. it really will, will be a painful thing. I mean, <coughs> because the whole essence of Slate is to plan your future. So if I cannot get, you know, what it is, you know, that you're trying to do for me, then uh, really, it, it doesn't matter. Well, so well, we're just uh, hoping, uh, and of course, Johnny, on a, on a, on a broader uh, uh, platform or stage, 
I, I am thinking <coughs> that the whole pension <coughs> will need to be overhauled. I mean, as of today, I cannot put a finger on anything and say that the second tier pension scheme is, is, right. is properly being done because as I sit here, Where's the money, I by am the way? unaware of exactly what is happening mm. there. Okay, mm. some uh, entities have their workers, provident fund and others not properly uh, structured. Mm. Uh, it, the whole thing is, is, is a port of, mm. of confusion. Right. So as we mark the day, I am mm. hoping that by the close of the we have a, a proper idea of what mm. the pension scheme is all about. Look, in some countries, pensions are huge funds that the state can even rely on right. for development. Right. But over here, it does not work. Mm. The, the ordinary man will contribute to SNIT for about 30, 40 years yes. and can never acquire a property SNIT is selling mm. using his own Exactly, his resources own, to uh, construct. Resources. Yeah. And, and, and that makes it sad. In other countries, like I said, pensions are huge. People can rely on it. The state can rely on that mm. funding to bring development. I think we need to have a conversation about all this. It's important that we do because if you are taking my money to put up, you know, houses that are supposed to be affordable and I cannot afford those houses and you have used my money to put them up, then there certainly is a problem. So, uh, so let's come again. But just to run you by uh, a little uh, May Day trivia before we take our break. International Labor Day dates back to May 1 to 4, uh, 1886, when some courageous leaders in the USA called a general strike uh, to back their demand for a legal guarantee for an eight-hour working day. Here in Ghana, we started the maiden edition of the celebration in 1965. So the Trade Union Congress of Ghana is the main umbrella organization for labor and trade union activities in Ghana. So if you didn't know now, you know, it started in 1886 mm. in the United States when uh, some persons decided that, well, let's demand for eight hours of work. And then uh, 1965 in Ghana, we caught the fever and here we are. We take a break from return. There's more action here. No, no matter what you need to just get excited. That's right, right man. Yes, I mean, right. somebody yeah. somebody wants to be you. Yeah, but uh, yeah. It's not so possible. if you yeah. if you're on this day thinking about how much you earn or you know uh, how you're, your salary you're not is happy delayed. at your workplace, uh, exactly. you're not excited because mm. your, your your work environment isn't that great, mm. your salary isn't that great. Conditions of sales yeah, you are just not need good. To, yeah, just I need mean, to let go of them and, and be fine. Re remember that there are people who are also not employed, mm. by the way. So mm. they are, they also have a problem. So mm. you, you think that yours is worse, but yours is better than somebody's. And mm. so don't go comparing yourself with people. You mm. can aspire to aim greater and become bigger, but don't compare yourself with people. No. Right. Yeah. Happy Workers Day, all of you are there. Mm. We're asking you just to get up. I'm sure a lot of you are still in bed, but we're asking you to get up and uh, put one or two things together. It promises to be an exciting day. The weather looks quite uh, refreshing this morning. We're praying for uh, not too sunny. Uh, yeah, so oh, but the sun will shine because uh, it, the, 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 the dark went away quickly. Yeah, but uh, quickly. Let's say if we have a kind of... Uh, uh, not too hot environment. Okay. I think it will be a great celebration okay. today. But because the workers are going to march from a brass ball to the independence. But tomorrow is a working day. Are you aware? It is. But uh, you <laughs> know, uh, <laughs> some will stay <laughs> late into the night, and so certainly tomorrow will mm. be a difficult day to get up and go <laughs> to work. But <laughs> don't forget, tomorrow is uh, <laughs> back to work. We don't want a Raju <laughs> Right. But are workers <laughs> happy, Johnny? Yeah. Well, I, I am are workers happy. I, am, I, I, well, I, I don't know what to say, but uh, well, I mean, it depends on what you are looking at. Um, if for example, like we're talking about mm. conditions of service, you're talking right. about, uh, you know, how much you earn, you're talking about the work environment itself, office politics, and, you know, there could be a boss that's not gain, there could mm. be one that's sweet. It depends on the environment where you find yourself, you know. Uh, and I, on, this, on this particular occasion, I feel uh, sometimes, you know, the, the expatriates who come to set up factories here, mm. those biscuit factories, those uh, rubber manufacturing factories, uh, and, and all of that, uh, the, the kind of treatments that we have heard them receive. Some of the stories we see in exactly, the Exactly, you know, from these expatriates, how they disrespect them, how they, you know, sometimes humiliate them publicly, you know, must stop. And those are the kind of things that I expect the, uh, you know, the trade the, the unions and, 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 and all of them to start looking at because it's not good. I mean, the fact that I'm a casual worker doesn't mean I, I lose my right to life, to live, 
uh, to dignity, all the things enshrined and guaranteed in the 1992 constitution. Because I am a casual worker, I, I, I lose them. The TUC, it's all right. The, 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 the TUC says that well, workers are not too happy because um, what they are earning uh, due to the economic conditions, uh, what they earn at the end of the month, uh, it doesn't make them comfortable. Uh, well, I, I think that sometimes, high, I think that sometimes the, well. the, 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 the trade unions, they talk too much. Mm. They, they talk too much. And, and then the next thing is that they are threatening strike. Mm. They talk too much. You know, here, here is a clear case of, you know, what were the examples I'm giving now. If mm. you go to a factory, you will find some Indian or some Lebanese or some Chinese or some foreigner somewhere from, from nowhere who is just here humiliating people. We have heard so many of those stories mm. as opposed to telling us that people are not happy so, or maybe they are looking at organized labor. Right. But there are people in the informal sector who are also not happy. How are they trying to impact them to put them in shape? They, are not, they, sh they, should, not, they, they should tell us. Now, number two, the government says we need to start taxing those in the informal sector to be able to rake in more revenue to deal with some of these things that they are talking about. Mm. Ever since we started campaigning, at least here, that look, those in the informal sector, the mason, the plumber, the baker, all those people, we need to bring them together and try and at least get something small from them to help the nation. What have been their contribution to that? So well, they talk too much sometimes, I well, think. Well, with the TUC, would they say that? Well, we are organized labor, and so uh, perhaps those not organized, it is government duty to get them organized. And well, so but what you have... They wouldn't have so much to, to, to deal with. You have the experience. Would they you be making a legitimate argument? Well, they were, I mean, they would be making, because you started this in 1965. Hello? Now, you have the expertise to, to be able to do some of these things. At least give government a proposal. Tell government that, look, we believe that if you look here, you look here, you look there, you will be able to find the people you are looking for. Mm. They ad you advise GRE, and then you work together as a team, sit around the same table, and see how we can get it done, as opposed to making statements and going on strike. I, I, I don't buy well, that idea. Well, let's see if these workers are happy. <laughs> the idea. Today is workers' day. Eric J is on the streets around some workers, and they've been talking about whether they are happy or not. Let's join them. Hello, good morning and welcome to today's edition of the Daily Rant. My name is Eric KOJ. Today is May Day. Some will prefer to say it is Workers' Day or Labor's Day. It is a day set aside to recognize the contributions of our gallant workers across the country and also across the world. Now, Ghana celebrated its first May Day on 1960 and declared Dr. Kwame Nkrumah as the first best worker under then Secretary General of TUC, Mr. J.K. Tutuga. Now, um, as we celebrate today, we are asking a simple but very potent question. What is the state of the Ghanaian worker? My name is Eric Ewoji, and this is The Daily Rant. Um, nobody would say the in the Nakutia, Ozimu, and now Osun. Osande said, Damna, Otsa, nobody would have a problem and will be living in Utopia. Natural Symbia Renyo. Now, Oyanzeme Bien, Mokot President Kufona Symbio Cambribi, or say, the workers seem to be working or pretending to be working, and the government is pretending to be paying. Ejuma Woho, Ze, Nemu, Yenzimu. But difference wom baby baby at least difference kakra kra bim I will hear the at least ye butum yaka wansem. Ghanaian worker na kutia untum fanum kufie. Ne condition of service. Na ne environment in pa or ye juman pono u bim po wa sabu sabu or ma and wasn't another or ma or ye imu motivation biara mon fan ye juma. Inti nde ye di or ye uh juma fuinara wana wo de na ye ma wan or ye m um ijuma pa nye e ye one shadin. Usani de akutuan gana for workers wari bro. 
wore bre pa 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 tin ara ni won kotoku minyim weka si bia mi shia wona e baka da wota ade woda ni chiri he ara aho chiri nti wonam fom woda to fom nkakra 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 ebo ho ane da e kwantintin we twa nti yesre eh abane nya na femizi sa abane ye na femizi no odembra finchim do to ho to regulate the worker clocking device na ji inara odiba the workers would, uh, would also, I mean, do their path. The quality of work is also part of it. Um, there was a single spine, was there a Now, I could a cursor. As some may be saying, you there, and I could hear now, or about a cordon, uh, wahimfa. It is a whole system, whole organized system. Um, now, me meet sir, saying you there. Government machinery was going to work better. Government institutions were going to be more productive. Now, them productivity now is a cababano. Now, Obama, Abano's way to widen. Will to ya cow, no way to any yay. Now, productivity in Yen to me achieve because systems are not on you. Then, my brother Rick King, my bed, you eight o'clock, my bed, you book him. If you are not a matter of eight, oh, my mother had ten. Say, you might say, yeah, it's who's you are. Nay, you madden, a due time ago, a man of equity, you may find that were a year more said that fatty be a year. Sabby, oh, do baby, I'm paying for kind. Why can't you know so? Or so could to come no. Or so would be a who made ye, Titrupa. Nemo, what band they be a damn like a desica attitude to work, poor work attitude, and quit man term, acquire the mobile phone, net and one year, browser, and you know, more can with that. In the about to ask her, Oban work out to put in also. Ye knew a nom, na ye ain't Janoma, ye ye juma, ye best ray. In the labor law. I mean, I will ever can of one boom na the year you juma war. Young father, I had a neighbor can of one boom no. Branch you at a massa. In Timmy Jimmy did the Ubiara obey a doji nim. Nani employer obey sininia and I do be dinning. Jimmy did or Jennifer or ye and Braquano da obey. But you see, I mean, dumb unions, 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 Nazan. Oh, ya, na the leadership, the frontier son. One in the end so. Na or ye de sabi sabi u chada ye kan wasem. Because ye bo boom, ya ye bibi ya fa jun ya kwa ha. Wun ya walk the round table ne pe wate wate mekada wate ya me chada wu diti wate ya we push or ye brown no we push brown ne pe e bo wuden susui na ja wadu kwa table hon from the general workers union na wa dan. Wa ba na wal can be before for. As a kur ane be na or ya o how on your day, to them, I mean, you ain't the body. Oh, union, union, you have a man paying for a call, or a banner. Now, members and uncles and win one J decisions. No union, union, or them in your own way in our canoe. Oh, yeah, are you at the papa? Chad, all my employers and uncles are with John Nando. I'm way BBR, we're very careful. Now, oh, yeah, I can cry me who knows in there. Workers, Nankas are what look like when you are more in shame when you are too. Man, being funny, we pet, we would draw one or pet, no out to wagon him. Were free meeting her, one call. In Tabunda, decisions are, and I be be all how one more than child underground, no other con, what the balcony would have got to Granada, not travel out, Cosono, waiting with one one yet. The difficulty in forming unions in Asia, most often our private sector, Asia, especially with these foreign companies, I can name a lot of them. Ah, what Aberdeen Sina. Demos a one a day abandoning to Munko Central Macade abandonia into Munkoho, P. Nankasa, E. Sabu Sabu, aban M. Shisha on ye private sectors and washes. More oya yet town who pa de abrofu juma, and one need be before we deen him. Oh, man, Cassa be before one who wire rough, what today, what today. Short changing of workers' conditions. A boom the one wire basa. In this case, na a boom there, Sabu Sabu, more yet the water two, ye into three, ah, oya day, you may have no, winya, nazi, a human pin for order to one as any ye, you know, a boom the wabichon. Wabichon a damn pair, a boom that that trust in joining a union, contributing towards a union. Ne ne gluten. Ebo hunda wa abafum. Sabi o sabi o. Mo mo ni pa ba mfaso na minye. Um, part of the problem in ye. Uh, ye nanka sa mesa ye hun foreigners. Um, I am not calling for xenophobic act. 
na mmom se metimu krom na se obi ebo ye adwuma oye na mmom okaman kotin a na nka ye na adwuma ne kese nara owodo o shaase fi ye ara wa ye de se bi bi ara bro nyin nsa zima a ye dru ho all is okay na ya da an ye ho but so ye awu bibi nyi we adwuma ye na nka nka ara se wo kala ye red na aba na o Oh, oh, the color green. Not the marble on your one car. But what if you won't cry, Tima Zikisi? No more brunin is it, Darby. And you can check and you hear workers complaining. Ah, oh, being put to me catcher and a de brunion. Would seem pie ye de and de. Yes, they do my bamin ye bere ye. Gana for, oh, yeah, we are local indigents in a fun one yim. Labor laws, a Jumana warrior, Nankasa Nimun, she say, Nimumbra, and Nancy say, Oh, wow, obey save one, and all born who ban with Jumanu. In some a pina, what to sing one, I must say that, or Chenebi assembly opinion be the assembly din. No, yes, and Papa cry. I feel so, Martin, the Boa, eh, Juman, or Yan, no Sabin, the Juman, why I didn't. See, Obaka, not now, obey ye. Obey in a dino be a bit in fact, and that's one year you were done and will be jumped if it will be a show. In the pina, yes, I let me throw now. Okay, come on, I don't know. The issue, the theme for the celebration this year, also the sustainable pensions for all, the role of social partners. Asha, a Ghanaian worker, nay, pension, and to train on Asha Uzuma. Organizers, crafters of all these things, and Sabi Wombwa, Brofaka, send a part and ward also. Reality on the ground in the air show. Sabio Sabio, minimum be an appear a minion case. Now catch him then a pension pay. Yeah, I think is it three hundred or so. And why? No, 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 Government to be a rabba, it be also about the managers of uh, of 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 uh, tier two, whatever. Ni hinara or ye the management no one ye ma on ye the worker the contributor. That thing a ban and share no one sees in an ye ya. I mean, or come on, continue the worker should agitate and then they would perhaps a be a what be a new thing so that at the end of the day, more co pension a dana a dana. Member one schooler, one schooler. Young fan ye be 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 concrete at the end of the day. Where can I be with them? My boma, my brain in our way dreaming. Sabio, my minye ini, another mo mo home fasuni. I'm the here na ye zi pension home kumu yango pension da. Ni mum ye hu binom wanaze. Currently, pension act no. Se ashe wa zawo krate da. Oye fi o pa 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 pa. Meka de o ye. O sande watu tu nyeme bi se wa kasa su ye weka. Net asa, a boom who may say, na and make sure the open is secure. I mean, just last two months, my shadow, I'm a quick a statement to see how far I have paid. No, mum, ye mu far, we don't know what is in the pension act. May you mind what's it tier one or tier two, tier three, tier four, nanyan. But ye koni ye sunya, and now ye must snit, a bany neighbors in coma. Then we are empowered to hold snit. To the award. So, I are a whole year there. As late as 2015, na snit in yim a cow do do a abana boy for snit to na as a missy kama na yim za as a man. And bosom, na mebeja, a boom as a bama man. Pension, they say, uh, Dachi, oh, good baby, yet it's here, good baby, I am bro. Yeah, whether we like it or not, or what you are. I mean, I don't say who with me. Na oje wa mbamba odu mo wo shira na se tumi nya retirement age ya the next one obotum wa rely on the pension inti pension ya za no hia papa papa inti the late uh, the former president kufona bruno kofa the uh, Ghana pensions regulatory uh, regulatory authority or the tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 pension scheme not the bay in fact wo kom wo di marketing e ma sisi ya no ya me na do mara wa be mandatory ya owo ho inti so far no so good with the implementation of this new pension uh, pension scheme, you know, me did the workers stand in a very brighter chance to enjoy their pensions, even though 
yen ka de bibia ya mi pension na obokko no ska obejije ne ye so huge de obia no ho button but nka kra kra today is may day some prefer to call it labor day or workers day as we mark today my ranters believe that it is incumbent on workers to be familiar with the labor law the pensions act and also the workings of SNED so that they will be able to demand their due. This is a daily rant. My name is Eric Yawije. We wish all workers a happy Workers Day. Thank you for watching. Welcome back and thank you very much. 38 years, uh, 35 years old, American patient Boydu had the intention of becoming a cobbler. And uh, initially, patients had to be married to a cobbler who has since passed away after her husband's death. She uh, took over the business and is excelling in the male-dominated uh, employment area, taking care of her children and all of that. Now, as Ghana joins the world to celebrate the role of society, Joyce Ling Wood visited patients and has come through with this report. Patience used to be a cleaner at a firm here in Accra. Occasionally, she would assist her husband in her free time men's shoes. After the death of her husband in 2014, she was compelled to quit her job due to low remuneration. With her two children and no support, she braced up, turned a deaf ear to public opinions, and perfected the act of shoemaking. For now, she lives at Adenton but operates a makeshift shop at Kanda, where clients are offered excellent service in shoemaking. Patience Boedi says she has no regrets and enjoyed every bit of the journey to become a cobbler. Occasionally, some clients doubt her abilities, but her work always leaves them dumbfounded. Initially, when I brought my shoe, I thought she could not do it, but to my surprise, she worked on them perfectly. The business is profitable. I am able to take care of my kids. Sometimes I get hundreds of citizens when the business is good. Some clients are always surprised to see a female cobbler. The first time near the idea or the hoops. Currently, she does not have any apprentice or support staff and does shoe repairs manually. She entreated the public to support her with some machines to enable her work faster to meet tight deadlines for her numerous clients. Patients encouraged women to challenge their status quo by venturing into male dominated professions. Patience Bwedi is a living example that career choices should not be influenced by gender and looks forward to seeing more women cobblers. Wow. Senior Bright. <laughs> These are the women we need to celebrate. Yeah, you exactly. Know, on such exactly a the day. point. I mean, in a male dominated area, mm. you know, it's, it's impressive. It's impressive. No, I'm not surprised about anything like that because, you see, the point is that our, our women have not open themselves up to some of these things. Mm. I mean, you can find women in all kinds of endeavors now. I mean, wow. where we are, women cannot say that for a reason or two, they wouldn't want to go into certain areas of mm. uh, uh, employment. employment. So for me, a woman uh, being a cobbler isn't anything uh, strange, mm. except that our women have uh, refused to do it. Mm. I, I do not know how to reconcile the fact that they, they keep suggesting that mm. what a man can do, they can do better. And yeah. yet, we don't <laughs> see them in some areas that are presumed to be. I, I, I think it's society's own, mm. uh, you know, uh, straight jacketing of things, you know, where the society boxes you into, oh, this is a male-dominated yeah, area, it's for, it's for women. oh, this is a male-like uh, a male -like phone, or this is a masculine phone, mm. this is a feminine car, you know. Society itself puts people in that block. Mm. So you remember when women started wearing trousers, people frowned upon it. 
and then said, well, it's just for men. It's not for, it's not for all of us. <laughs> I mean, you find a woman wearing a suit, mm -hmm. not a skirt suit, but a suit with a trouser. And people think, yeah, hey, she's looking it's too tough masculine. Or she's wearing a, a tie, a flying tie. People think, hey. You know, so we should stop boxing our women and allow them to explore. Yeah, I to think they can do it. I mean, they can, do, they can go into masonry, carpentry. I mean, mm -hmm. some of them uh, can go into driving and all kinds of work. So I, mm -hmm. I guess it's just a matter of them deciding what to do. So yeah. it doesn't have to be the fact that you're a woman and so you can uh, be a cobbler. You can't certainly do. But we're staying on Workers' Day mm. and very soon the show will be getting you what's happening uh, with the workers as they begin their march from the overall spot to the Black Star Square. But over here in our studios, their childhood dream was to work in the tourism sector as travel guides or passenger handlers. But the yeah, inability to secure a, a wide collar job after graduating led them into an almost related venture. We bring you the inspiring story of two cousins with diplomats who sell rice and beans. We know us uh, watching for a living. Watch this. Data from the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, ISE, indicates it may take up to 10 years for a large number of graduates to secure employment. 25-year-old Jennifer and 26-year-old Barbara are not new to the challenges. The two who have been struggling to get a white-collar job upon completion of their diploma in travel and tourism have now created an income source for themselves. They are into the selling and delivery of jollof rice and wachi, a dish of cooked rice and beans. Growing up, I always wanted to be um, a passenger handler. I had this passion for seeing planes and seeing the hostesses and all that. But um, I realized you didn't get it how you always wanted to be. Um, so sometimes you'd have to cope with the government and fitting where necessary. So I just decided to grab this opportunity. Barbara Kisiwa holds a diploma in travel and tourism and has been running the business for close to a year at Kwabinya in Accra. To further increase her chances of securing a job, Jennifer pursued a higher national diploma at the Accra Polytechnic. And for her, business has been quite good so far. Everybody just likes what he or she does. So I'm just happy with what I do. By 7, we bring everything down. So let's say by 7.38, we start selling. And it depends on the market. When the market is good, by 10, 9.30, everything gets finished. So we have to pack and go up. So Barbara tells me there has not been any regrets of serving their numerous customers each day. We are able to deliver, let's say, 30 to 50 packs a day. Averagely, um, selling. Let's say we are able to sell 500, 600 cities a day. Currently, their friend, who is also an unemployed nurse, and their auntie have been assisting them to run the watchy business. Their auntie encouraged parents and guardians of unemployed graduates to support their entrepreneurial drive. Uh, so I must support them. Unemployed graduates should be encouraged to start a business. Their income could even be more than those engaged in white-collar jobs. It is clear while government is seeking solutions to reduce graduate unemployment, it appears more graduates are now setting up their own businesses after leaving school. Watchy, watchy. That's, 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 that's a good that's, that's a, that's a business. Good business. I don't think business. why we, I, I don't know why most people think that, well, mm. if you don't work in an air conditioned space, <coughs> you're not waking up at, you know, seven to get to work at eight, yeah. close at five, get home at, at nine or seven, uh, then you are not working, really. I mean, I think that that concept, that mindset, must you know, change. Must, change. must change. The, I mean, entrepreneurship and private business. Mm. Is the way to go. I mean, the government has consistently said that the private sector is the engine of growth. Mm. And it meant that not just for white collar jobs, it meant that also for people who can fend for them. I mean, people wear suit and tie, they go and come and they earn 40 CDs a day. Right. Mm. These guys you just saw who are selling their watch, 
in spite of what the academic credentials are, they could make more than 200 CDs a, a day. day. And that's a lot of money. So you and I don't make that much when we sit here the whole exactly. day talking. Yes. Comparatively, <laughs> they are better off than you. Yeah. I mean, and so it's about time we start reorienting our minds, start changing our minds about certain things. I mean, farming, you know, animal husbandry, all those things. We need to start changing our minds about them, the, really. The, the, the problem we have sometimes, I mean, those who are experts will want to put it in, in a better way, that there are people who are employed and yet they claim that they are unemployed. Right. So a lot of the guys on the streets of Accra selling mm. uh, believe that they are not employed. But Johnny, you know, um, you, are, you are office. a blow bee, so you right. know that lady who sells uh, Say uh, yes, your Kagari, and, yes. and, and, yes, yeah, and, and, and that's well. what she's done all mm. this while. Yeah. Okay, and I know of a woman in Accra somewhere, man, who sold Gary and beans. Okay, and all her kids went to school with that. Mm. So it, it, it is a business. It is how we run it. Okay, exactly. it is our commitment exactly. to it. I have seen people who sell uh, roasted plantain, mm. and that's their business. Mm. And so you go to such a person and say, Tell I am not employed. Mm. And yet a person is selling Gary and. Yeah. Uh, 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 and, and, they, and they don't see it as work. There's this, there's this lady, when we, I think when we did the Ghana month here in mm. 2017 or so, uh, she, she came around, or 2018, I should say. She came around, she sold Kinky. And, um, you know, I, I got closer to her, I asked her, she said, well, I have a degree, uh, <laughs> but I couldn't find a job out there. I've sent my CV so many times, I couldn't mm -hmm. find it. So, so she's looking for white collar. So my mom does the KK business. She's getting old. I took over. And now I'm happy. I yeah, make money. Yeah. I mean, by, by 5.30 a.m., the KK is ready. I take them to Vantage Points, uh, put it there, have people sell for me. And then I go and collect my money afterwards, go to the market. And even though it's a tedious cycle, it was, I mean, at the beginning. At this point, she's happy mm -hmm. because she makes more than 400 CDs a day. And that's money. I mean, that's <laughs> where, money. which <laughs> office do you sit in <laughs> with a degree, <laughs> uh, you know, without work experience <laughs> and get 400 Ghana CDs every unless, day? Unless you go to Galam C. <laughs> <laughs> you can't Oh, we don't like Galam C. Okay, right. um, <laughs> we're so wishing workers are happy, happy, happy workers day. I know most of you are resting in your homes and enjoying uh, perhaps some food, some drink, but. Mm. Don't forget that uh, there's a match start not a brass port to the Black Star Square where the yeah. president will this morning address the workers. Yeah. Um, the, the theme is on pensions. Pensions. And the TUC is asking that uh, pay attention to what happens to your pensions wherever you work. Uh, make sure the calculations are well done. Mm. Uh, get your employer to make sure he or she is doing the right thing. If you think your pensions are going mm. wrong, Ask questions. Ask questions, and that's right why yesterday some, some uh, students brought some report to me. They were talking about the Students Loan Trust Fund. Mm. And they say, look, for, for, over f for a long time, they have not received the monies They're that getting, you know, they're <laughs> supposed to get. But these monies are supposed yeah, to be yeah. used to uh, buy books and pay their fees and accommodation and other things. Mm. So they don't get the money when they need them. They get the money when you know, they don't need the money. And yeah. then, so they are forced to use the money for, for other, other activities. At this point, exams are about to begin. Mm. If you haven't paid your fees, like we know in the universities, you won't be allowed to sit for the exam. There are people at the student lo loan uh, office who are supposed to be ensuring that these ch students get their monies ahead of time. They are not doing that. But guess what? They've been paid. And somebody is wishing them a happy workers' day. Uh, <laughs> sad. And also, the mm. operator of the tow boot number six on the Accra Tema motorway, your, your machine you say is faulty. So when people Has pay you money. Has it not been fixed right now? Uh, it's well, it's, it's not been fixed. When people oh. pay you money, you say that your machine is faulty. Where does the money go? I can't wish you happy workers' day <laughs> because I don't know where the money goes. If we know, uh, we shall wish you happy oh workers' God. day. But let's go up now to Gambaga because some inmates at uh, the Gambaga alleged witches camp continue to administer medicines even after they have completed uh, the entire dosage prescribed by their doctors. This is due to the fact that they are unable to uh, assess medical uh, or hospital bills. Zubayda Ismail has their following report. Basic health care is the right of every Ghanaian citizen. Thus, human right is duly enshrined in the 1992 Constitution. It means, irrespective of gender, physical stature, mental stability, and age, 
quality health care must be provided to you when the need arises. However, inmates at the Gambaga alleged witches camp, mostly the aged, have a difficulty accessing health care. Inmates at the camp who have been alleged to be witches with many banished from their communities feel safe here. Daily basis, we go to the hospital. Sometimes I can go six, five times. Oh. Yeah. Anybody who is sick here is spread fast because of their numbers. Mm -hmm. Something like cholera. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It is something that can easily spread. Ghana in 2003, through an act of parliament, introduced the National Health Insurance Scheme. The amended Act 852 was subsequently implemented in 2004 to provide financial access to quality health care. We have registered them with the NHS. They are all card bearers. Anybody who is here is a card bearer. We don't joke about it. But the fact is even that sometimes the Senate carrying the NHS and the only thing they will do is to write, go and buy drugs. And, and they, the money? they come back here. Ideally, Inmates should not have difficulty accessing health care services. But that is not the case. The situation gets tougher when their cards expire. Our difficulty now is even not sending them there. The difficulty is they will write a note going buy drugs. Where is the money? That is what is killing us now. Pakrugu Bukhari, a native of Mamprugu, narrates her ordeal after she reported to the hospital with some pain in her eyes about a month ago. Her prescription had three medicines, but she received two out of the three. The third medicine, an eye drop, was not supplied. According to her, though she had the health insurance, she's a registered member of the National Health Insurance. She was only given this. And with the eye drop, they told her that um, there were 25 Ghana cities and she had to pay. At that instant, she didn't have money and so she didn't buy it. She came back home, raised money through this business. If symptoms persist for three days, consult your doctor. A popular caution by doctors means nothing to Pwakurugu. Though she has been vilified a number of times while seeking medical care, that did not deter her. Her refusal to visit the hospital for a review is not because of the vilification. She intimates she is unable to go for review before she goes to see the doctor at the consulting room. She's also demanded to pay 25 cities, where she does not have the money. And that is the reason why she's not been able to go back. And she's opted to keep taking these two medicines and keep putting this into the eye, though she doesn't seem to see any improvement. Her sight is steadily failing, but she says her intuitiveness is enough. I just inquired from her how she's able to identify between the diclofenac and the paracetamol. It's interesting she's still able to do that just by feeling them. So the sizes are what she's, she uses to identify these medicines. Once she fills those and she sees that they are the smaller ones, she knows these, this is uh, diclofenac, and then she knows this is paracetamol. Pakurugu Bukhari and the inmates meet doctors only when civil society organizations visit with doctors. 2014, we got one, and then, uh, yeah, we got another one recently, but that was last year. It's not often and often, apart from these two, I can remember, we don't, but, Normally, it will come when someone wants to support us to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. The caretaker, Samson Lar, recounts some moments between inmates and health workers during hospital visits. We send them to the hospital and sometimes they just look at them and they think like, immediately they get to know that she's a witch. I can remember one of them, I had to speak to the doctor. Because what came out of his mouth, I was very disappointed. What came out of the doctor's mouth? was treating her and I don't know whether someone prompted the person that that was the women I was taking care of, and he said, "Oh, they kill people and they also fear death." Mm -hmm. And he said it 
in the language that the woman could even understand. So I was like, what is going on? Someone is sick. They have just accused the person. The person is not well. How do you say this? That's uh -huh. from a doctor, a learned yes. person. Yes, a learned Oh, I can tell you that those who call themselves learned persons are even those who fear them more. Inmates are not vilified only when they visit the hospital by themselves, as residents are unable to identify them. But their ages do not allow them to walk from the camp to the hospital. I think the youngest person here is around 60 years. The youngest? The youngest. If not 60, 55, yeah, something okay. like that. Many of them are old. Many, many of them are old. About, I tell you, 90%. Most inmates have health conditions, including mental disorders. Routine checks for such inmates would help improve their health. We have, there are about three who are even having this mental uh, illness. Uh, I know many of them are also this blood pressure and hypertension and sicknesses. What we do is that, that's why I was referring to monthly hospital we attend. We have identified all of them and put them into groups. Those with high blood pressure, we kept them into. So we send them monthly to pick their drugs. We leave the drugs with them. For instance, the mental uh, people, we have given the drugs to Mangazia. Okay. Every morning, whether you like it or not, you must go and greet the Mangazia. That is our tradition here, okay. as soon as you are here. So what we do is that every morning when they go there to greet her, she will give it to them. Samson says the situation would have been less challenging if inmates were beneficiaries of the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty program, which would have absorbed the renewal fees. Another good thing we were thinking was the proper policies like the LIP program. Mm -hmm. We were thinking that all of them should have been registered. How many of them are registered? Oh, there are just only about 29 or 30 people who are registered. Out, and of, out of the 78. The East Mampusi Municipal Chief Executive, Abdul Nasser Danladi, has meanwhile assured registration process of inmates will commence soon. I was thinking that the first quarter they will allow us to continue, but I don't know if it will be the problem. So now that you, you inform me, I will let the social welfare officer take care of that. Until then, caretakers have to use their meager salary to pay hospital bills of inmates. Zubaida Ismail, TV3 News, Gambaga. A very sad development that yesterday Dr. Wejo Asewa was asking on social media whether or not we've had uh, these NGOs and religious organizations who are flaunting their cash out there uh, turn their attention to them before. Well, the answer is no. Nobody cares about them, really. But happy birthday to you, Melchizedek. Flesh up and uh, CEO of Dada B's Empire and Yebu Tien, the hate maker, Dada Hafko. We'll take a break. When we return, there's more action. We'll read your messages to the workers across the country as we get ready to hear what the president has to say on Workers' Day. Sing is for free, but let's turn our attention now. We'll start off with Tilapia. Tilapia has a cartoon for May Day. It says, Happy Workers' Day! Exclamation mark. But the laborer deserves his wages. So he's screaming, happy workers' day, but the laborer deserves his wages. And guess what? We have the National Builders Call, uh, NAPCO, which was introduced. We're told that 100,000 young people will be employed. Yes, indeed, we have seen quite a number of that. But the point is, are they getting their salaries? They have been crying. And uh, somebody's building, he looks lanky, slim, uh, enervated, poor and dehydrated, he's sweaty with the shovel and his topless says, hmm, Labor Day without pay. And there's a foreman of works watching on, while this other man with a headpan uh, atop his head is trying to climb, he's also skinny, lanky. And look at the one up there. Uh, if the wind blows, he may fall with his trowel together. Napco without pay, interesting. And as we celebrate May Day, and you may be happy, uh, it's getting to day 30. Since the kidnapped girls, police pillow search for the girls. We were told that we know where the girls are. That was the key word. And the Daily Guide reported that, well, they are, they are seeking medical attention. They are in the custody of BMI. Subsequently, police came out to say, we haven't found the girls. We don't know where they are. And I'm sure you know that as of yesterday, the BNI boss 
is being kicked out. His deputy has been asked to replace him. You want to connect the dots? That's your own cup of tea this morning. But well, let's turn our attention to WhatsApp. WhatsApp starts and says, Good morning to Johnny and Bright and to all workers within and beyond. It has gotten to a time that government has to take a comprehensive look at public services like parks and gardens, uh, Department of Community Development, NCC, PWD. Resources are not given to these organizations, so the workers are not able to deliver their core mandate while drawing their salaries from government. Let's resource them for effective work. Also, TV3 should create a unique way of improving the New Day program by moving one region to the other that will promote local content and opportunities to others, but not only in Accra. I agree with you. We're looking for sponsorship. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're a business owner. Please come to our aid and let's travel across the country. But you raise a very solid point about uh, parks and gardens and all of that. If you go around town, you see that the median uh, in the middle of the streets are all overgrown with weeds. Uh, that's parks and gardens jobs. And you can't find them doing it because they don't have the money to take care of it. Sad, but true. People are earning salaries and they're doing virtually nothing. Not because they don't want to work. It's because the resources have not been given to them. Good morning, Senior Bright. Please help me to appeal to Mr. President to continue to take labor issues uh, at heart as we celebrate Workers' Day today. All concerns raised by workers should be dealt with promptly. Thank you, Kwesi Bwachi and Kofridia. A.U. Farouk in Tamale says, Good morning. Indeed, the celebration of Labor Day is meaningless until the total liberation of needs uh, of workers are provided in high uh, grand style. Never should we experience unprecedented strikes like that in this country due to hardship faced by workers, uh, workers uh, under this administration. How can Ghanaian workers be happy, you're asking? You attend interview for promotion passed, but effective date uh, it, it will take effect is not uh, indicated in that letter since 2000. 2018 till date. I'm not happy. Bonnie from Akachi is uh, not happy. He has earned his promotion, but <laughs> the date when his, let, uh, his promotion will take effect and when he will get the benefit have not been stated. He says, well, I want to wish a happy birthday to myself. I'm blessed to celebrate Workers' Day alongside my birthday. This is from uh, Filami and Mark II. Happy birthday, my brother. Live long and stay strong. Good morning, TV3. I'd like to use your medium to appeal to Mr. President to pay workers' salary since 2013, even though he, has, he wasn't the one who incurred these debts, but I'm appealing to him to pay teachers their long, uh, long, long overdue salary or a salary in arrears, uh, if only uh, the Ghana Education Service is at heart. So they will have a sound mind to teach our children effectively and efficiently. Fisbury, uh, Kwamosu in Equipo. Good morning, workers of Ghana. The suffering of workers cannot be quantified. Please, workers need special treatment. Abraham Binde. And over 100 staff of First Atlantic Bank have been asked to go home. Labor Union, any advice on package for affected staff? You're asking. Good morning, Johnny. I want to wish every worker a happy Workers' Day. And let me use this opportunity to wish... Uh, Mel Kisadel, uh, Kisabel, I beg your pardon, Flesh, happy birthday, Samo, Kwao Fio. Indeed, the celebration of Labor Day is meaningless until, okay, we've well, read this already. And uh, Hi TV3, I wish Mrs. Mavis Ahumba Kofi of Ghana Shippers Authority, happy birthday today. I ask God blessings upon her life. I love you, my dear Francis Ahumba. Kofi is the husband. Oh, love is in the air. You're celebrating a birthday. Uh, crown it with something nice tonight. We won't be there to watch, but uh, crown it. Hello, Senior Bright, Johnny. And uh, since today marks Workers' Day, I, would, I want to find out from the finance minister why he ordered the controller and accountant department not to pay arrears old teachers. Nesta from Hohoi. Did he say that? Uh, well, let's take, let's take a, a seat now. They, they, Brad, the issue of uh, ghost names comes to and mind and on and workers day. well you know that every government comes and there's a cleanup of the uh what do you call it the yeah, register the government payroll and they tell us we have ghosts i don't know where the ghosts come from even though we have people working at the uh, control accountant general's department who are supposed to do due diligence we have had people do biometric registration and yet we keep hearing of ghosts where do the ghosts come from really <laughs> Oh, uh, they swerved it. Yes, and get onto the system. Right. How? Who put them there? Because ghosts. there's somebody who is supposed to be typing their name in there, mm. entering their thing. So uh, why won't why won't uh, we have 
you know, a standardized way of checking these things. How do the goods get in? And after we have realized that the goods, goods have gotten in, we have taken the money, do we prosecute people who have wrongfully taken salaries <coughs> or monies belonging to the state wrongfully? Do we? Do we punish them? We'll take a break now. When we return, there's more action here on New Day. Welcome back and thank you very much. We'll want to have a labor conversation. My guests are seated. But first, let's go to uh, last year, May Day, and listen to Dr. Yao Ba. He's the boss at TUC. What he had to say in response to the president's speech. Take a listen to him. As we all know, the lack of decent employment is the greatest challenge facing our country today. Out of nearly 13 million Ghanaians, who are eligible to work, just about 2 million or 15 percent have jobs that can be described as decent, even that is in relative terms. About 11 million Ghanaians, that's about 85 percent, are working in very precarious conditions with no hope at all for the future. Mr. President, it is indeed very disheartening to note that even the few Ghanaians who have some form of decent employment are constantly being threatened with redundancy. In 2015, we witnessed a mass redundancy exercise at Anglo Gold Ashanti of Wasiman, which affected over 5,000 mine workers. In March this year, just last month, two months ago, there was another mass redundancy exercise at Goldfields Ghana Limited, which affected over 2,000 permanent workers. When workers protested against the exercise, armed police and military personnel were deployed immediately to quell the protest. Some of the protesters suffered severe injuries, while others were arrested and thrown into police cells in very appalling conditions. This is not acceptable in a country which prides itself of 25 years of uninterrupted parliamentary democracy. What is democracy? If workers cannot protest against a mass redundancy exercise, that only aims at profiting foreign shareholders and a few privileged Ghanaians. These are our resources, and we should take control of them. We are appealing to you, Mr. President, to stop these unwarranted changes in modes of operation that are designed only to make supernormal profits in favor of foreign shareholders at the expense of Ghanaian workers. So that's uh, Dr. Yaoba, he is the boss at TUC. He was responding to uh, the president's speech. Uh, some critical points he raised in there that we'll have a conversation about, but you can always join us on our uh, WhatsApp platform and share your thoughts as well as we mark workers. They will also bring you the full parade uh, at the uh, uh, Independence Square. But let's turn our attention to, now to my guest. Hey, Ford, I'm the manager of standards and compliance at the National uh, Pensions Regulatory Authority. Chief, good morning. Thank good you morning. for your time. How are you doing, sir? Seth Abloso is a labor consultant and executive director of Labor Policy International. Seth, good morning. Thank good you. Morning. And the engineer Ben Arthur is a labor consultant. Good morning, engineer. Yes. How are you doing as well? Fine. Gentlemen, let's start off um, your wish for workers on this day, first of all, and then we'll get to Dr. Yalba's, you know, speech as they will pick the issues one after the other. Yeah, I think, I think um, I if you look at the, the, f the theme that is chosen for this year's celebration, it talks about sustainable pension for all. And uh, we from the MPRA, um, as, I mean, as we mandated by law, mm -hmm. are expected to ensure that people, uh, when they retire from active work, are supposed to be given the best of pensions mm. um, uh, to be able to look after them till um, the good law calls them back. Right. So, I mean, that is basically what we've been doing, and we expect that um, hopefully next year uh, we get into a stage where we call the decumulation okay. mm. after the passage of the <coughs> National Pensions Act 766. The first badge of um, 
uh, pensioners who will be retiring, mm. and we're hoping that um, they're going to get the best out of this particular uh, scheme uh, come next year. Mm. Mr. Abloso. Uh, from Labor Policy International, I always want to wish uh, all workers a happy May Day mm. uh, and hope that with it passing May Day, their, their fortunes will improve, mm. that they will get a fair remuneration for their work mm. and uh, look forward to retiring in dignity mm. and not in, in the state of fear right. that presently characterizes uh, pensions in this mm. country. Engineer, yes, May sir. Day is here again. <laughs> Every year it's here. What, what will be your initial thoughts for workers in this country? Well, for, let me begin by saluting all workers of this country mm. uh, and ask or indicate that your work is part of your worship. Mm. You know, I salute all workers from Ghana working elsewhere, uh, mm -hmm. the people of my hometown, of course, are Santi Mampo. But there's one statement that I want to etch on our heart. Right. It will be very good to say goodbye to pension and welcome pension. Right. But the situation is a bit different when it comes to developing countries. Uh, as we discuss this, I would want us to put it in context. Right. Uh, we are part of the global you know, situation, we are mm. part of the continental, you know, situation. So we could relate it from the global perspective right. and come down to, to, to Ghana. <coughs> but by and large, I think Ghana is not doing too badly mm -hmm. in terms of coverage in the former sector. Right. Our inability to cover more of the informal sector is, is our biggest challenge. Okay. And it stems from our you know, contest mm. as a Ghanaian, the economic contest that we have, mm. that is the main challenge. Right. So that these are my initial. I hear you. You know. M M Sir, let me start with you. So, Dr. Yalba mentioned that we have a total of 18 million people who are eligible to work. Mm. That's out our workforce. Exactly. Out of this, only two million have what he called decent jobs. That's worrying indeed for a country that says that look, <laughs> we care about the people and we are providing for them and all of that. Will the situation ever change? Uh, thank you. The situation will change uh, principally when government walks its talk. Mm. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we've adopted international labor conventions which then become applicable in this country. But regulators are not sufficiently uh, capacitated mm. to deal with the issues. For instance, the Labor Department is the major regulator okay. and inspector of decent work right. in all places. But they are woefully under-resourced. So when you hear persons in high places declaring commitment to ensuring decent work mm. and you come down to check on on the reality you find that they are completely detached right yes and and that is a very worrying situation mm. as as we said now the a creeping phenomenon in the workplace is piecemeal work and contract work okay that's right you find persons and and that is not decent work there are private employment agencies mm. many are resorting to private employment agencies okay and what they are doing is almost like a, a return to the days of slavery mm. look they are they are literally supplying workers to places even like banks so there are many workers in the banking sector who are not who are not staff of the banks mm. They are, they, are, they, are, they are supposed to be employees okay. and wrongfully so. So they are ad hoc staff, really, in yes. the strict sense of the yes. word. Yes. But you see, private employment agencies, and we have a public employment agency, the Labor Department. Right. A private employment agency can only make placements. Mm. But you can't hold on to the people who, who you, you provide, for instance, like for GCB Bank. And then GCB Bank pays you 
the employment agency okay. and then you intend <laughs> a pay a pretense to to to, the to, person, to, the to those persons right but you see the the employment agency essentially is a, a, a functions are clerical. Why, why are we allowing this to thrive if yes. we know it is yeah, wrong? Why are, are we allowing it? Yeah, those are the questions we must be asking. Why are we allowing mm -hmm. it? Why are we allowing it? Because when they make placements, it should end there. Mm. And then maybe they are paid for uh, facilitating a job for you. Right. But not to hold on to, not only are uh, this in the banks, some in industrial areas. Mm. Mm. And you find the uh, persons in yeah, industrial uh, manufacturing, mm. and the employment agency claims that they are they are they are workers. It's it's completely unacceptable. <laughs> wow. Let's take a listen to the president of the republic from last year. He had a response for Dr. Yao Ban. Take a listen. Take central stage in all our discussions. On May Day last year. The first of my tenure of office, I iterated my conviction, even though I had discovered much to my discomfort that I had become chief employer, that the private sector was best placed to create long-term sustainable jobs given the right atmosphere. Our belief in the capacity of the private sector does not, of course, suggest the government would be a helpless bystander that would simply look on in hope. Government, therefore, set about the task of putting in place the fundamentals that promote the enabling atmosphere for our entrepreneurs to thrive and create jobs. It has taken a lot of hard work and strong nerves to stay on the straight and narrow path to get the economy to start growing from the deep hole it was in. I'm happy to report that all the indicators are pointing in the right direction. GDP growth rate has more than doubled from 3.6% in 2016, the lowest in two decades, to 8.5% in 2017. Inflation is reduced from 15.4% at the end of 2016 to 10.4% in March 2017. So that's the President of the Republic responding to Dr. Yao Ban there. And uh, let me come to you now, Hayford. We talk about, and the, the point Mr. Blosu raises has really set me thinking deeply. The 11 million of our working class, as Dr. Yaba said, are working in very precarious situations. The president says the private sector must take a certain responsibility because the figures are looking good. But the question is, do the figures mean anything to these workers who are in this dangerous situation? Yeah, I think just to add to what uh, my colleague said earlier, um, you know these figures that you mentioned earlier mm. in terms of the 2 million right. and then the 80 million. Mm. I think it has to do with we trying to, I mean, making, uh, formalizing our, the informal sector. Okay. Now, out of these 2 million that uh, Dr. Yabai even mentioned, mm. only 1.3 is currently contributing to pensions. That's the reality. That's the reality. Mm. So mm. You, you can imagine um, the, the numbers, I mean, uh, that are even within the 2 million that mm. are not even benefiting from pension. Mm. And then again, if you look at the structure that he even spoke about, most of these people that get into this type of employment don't even, even pay pension. Mm. Because at a, I mean, eventually when the money is paid out to this so-called third party, instead of paying directly to this employee, right. they end up not even getting any, any money paid as pensions. So, I mean, it, it, it's quite a, a, a big problem. But, but, I but think that, that's fought within your lab. Well, we, we, we uh, obviously will take note of those employees that are on our radar. Mm. Even though uh, we still do a lot of I mean, monitoring to find out the employers that are um, I'm probably trying, I'm not, uh, not mm. paying pensions. But then again, you, you would have to get a data from a certain uh, institution like the Registrar General to be able mm. to provide you a data on the, the employees that have actually, the, uh, the companies that have been registered. Now, some of these companies are even dormant, and then you even go after them 
uh, uh, per the addresses that are, are provided to you by the registrar general, mm. you don't even find them. So it's quite a challenge. So uh, even though as a regulator... That it means we're heading for a ditch. Because if people are working and they are not paying pension, they are not securing their future, and the numbers that are contributing are little mm. or is little, it means that the dependency rate on the working class who are actually contributing and trying to make a life for themselves will be tougher yeah. as the years go on. Exactly. And, and the point is that, you know, as a regulator, I mean, we, 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 can, we, can, we will probably act on based on information that comes to us. Okay. Now, you find that a lot of, a lot of, a lot of um, um, workers don't even take, I mean, interest in their pensions. And um, we've had interesting situations where you find people coming to complain to us that I've worked for this employer for so many years mm. and I've come on pension. I went to SNIT and SNIT tells me that there's no money for me. So, and you go into this particular uh, employee mm. and they realize that he was even taking his money on the table. I mean, wow. there was no trail of money being paid into a bank account for you to be able to verify. Okay. So, yes, the regulator can do a lot of work, but we expect that people also take interest in their pension. Mm. If I get a complaint from an employee that a, a, an employer is not paying his pension, then I can now act. Otherwise, I would have to fall on registrar general to look for that employer. Is it a question of the regulator not being too interested in the affairs of these workers? Because if somebody can employ another and pay them over the table and not fulfill certain statutory obligations and they can get away with it, they would repeat the experience. Exactly. So, like I mentioned, you know, we, we fall on the Registrar General to get these employers. Now, you get the data from Registrar General, and then you go <coughs> even with the addresses that are provided, and you don't even find them there. So, we expect that employees also take interest, right. report these employers to us, <laughs> and then we can act, and then, and then go after them. In general, so the yeah. President said that the private sector must take a certain responsibility. Definitely. And because government is the largest employer, the private sector needs to come on to support them to deal with this matter. Let's look at decent work, as Dr. Yaba mm. mentioned. Uh, he says that, well, we have 11 million of our population working in dangerous situations with no hope for the future. And everybody is interested in the future. What do you have to say? Uh, thank you once again. I think uh, we need to put what he said in perspective mm. and possibly what I'm coming to say in the proper context. If you look at the structure of our employment you know, uh, situation in Ghana, mm. I think we have overemphasized on formal sector employment, which according to I think the last net report, mm. the coverage for those who are paying is around I think 60 68 percent mm. that's uh, the former sector right. so my colleague is right when he says that uh, some portion of even the former sector workers are not having their pensions mm. paid that is very right but we have an employment sector structure okay that is largely informal and let me give you the statistics according right. to ghana statistical service living uh, standard survey mm. it takes the former sector at about 14 percent out of it, the public sector is just a little under six percent. Mm. All that we're talking of the public sector, all public sector workers form a little under six percent, or let's say six percent of all workers in Ghana. Wow. So we have the private informal sector mm. being overwhelmingly large, eighty-six percent. Okay. So if we want to improve on our pensions coverage, improve on decent work standards or remove some of the decent work deficits, okay. then the right place to focus is the private sector. Mm. So if the president called on the private sector to come on board and to help, that is where we have a lot of the pitfalls. That's where we have a lot of the, the, the deficit. Mm. If you look at the survey that I have mentioned much earlier, you realize that about 76% of all workers in Ghana mm. are not educated to do what they are doing. And under secondary school level, okay. that is middle school and below. Right. So if you have a working populace or a labor force mm. that is not well educated mm. in what they do with less than secondary school, that is 76% of them. Right. What it means is that if you bring some kinds of jobs mm. in this country, you will still not be able to find a lot of hands, you know, yeah. To, to, to come. But if you permit me to look at the, 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 the decent employment okay, right. you know, issue, the parameters. Uh, the parameters, when we talk about decent work deficits, 
or when we say this type of work is not decent, mm. we are looking at whether there are equal employment opportunities. Okay. We are looking at whether there is adequacy of earning mm. match to productivity. <coughs> much of the issues that we litigate uh, you know, on or fight over is not realistic. For example, people might ask for a certain kind of wage okay. increment, mm. but if it's not supported by productivity, it is not fair and realistic. So when we're talking about wage increment, better terms and conditions mm. of service, if you look at Article 36 and you look at our labor laws, it has to be matched to productivity. Mm. If we are producing just two bottles of water in an industry mm. and you appear that you are the manager, you should be given a vehicle that the fuel alone is about 200 Ghana CDs uh, a day. It's unsustainable. Mm. So we talk about adequacy of earnings, in the context of productivity. Okay. And then we talk about decent working time. Okay. In the media, in the OMC's arena, a lot of people don't have decent working time. Mm. The average working hours per week is 40 by ILO convention and by our Ghanaian laws. Right. And then on the average, on daily basis, it has mm. to be eight hours. But there are some people who go to the filling station, mm. they work 12 hours and beyond. In the private security firm, they work 12 hours and beyond. And it moves on. They, Some they, of them they are don't in, go on leave. They are in jobs. So if you find one, you do everything to hold on. I, I understand. Per, per the conversations that I've had with people. I, say, I understand. Even though they are pressed and they know what they are, they are being exploited, <laughs> they hold on because they are talking about bread and butter issues. That's How do point. you reconcile the two? We, yeah, but when we... The term decent work is not a simple term just to mean one thing. Okay. That's why I'm giving you the parameters. If you are unable to combine, if your the, the, the nature of your work is such that combining family life, mm. personal life and work is extremely difficult, that is also an indecent work. Yeah, okay. it's a serious yes, it's, it's a serious deficit. Mm. So the work must be crafted in such a way that you should be able to combine family life, okay. work and personal life. Quickly and then there should be a stability you. and security <coughs> of your work. Mm. <coughs> If the kind of work you do, like my senior brother mentioned, peace meal, seasonal work, contract work, and if the stability and security of your work is compromised, mm. we call it indecent work. And then equal opportunities or non-discrimination mm. at the workplace is also a deficit. And then safe working environment. Okay. And when it comes to the private sector, it's a very serious deficit mm. we have in this country. And then social security, right. that is where we zoom on. Okay. Whether in your old age, mm. you have adequacy of earnings. But if you're already in your working life, you are in the informal sector, you are not earning enough, you are not making a contribution, mm. it stands to reason that in your old age, you are not going to have some of these secured benefits. And then social dialogue at the workplace. Mm. All the ones that I have mentioned can be, can be in their positives. Okay. But if at the workplace, you are not allowed to form a union, mm. You, don't, you are not allowed to have workers or employers' representation. Mm. The employers do not allow workers to engage them in collective bargaining mm. and the rest. That is also called indecent well, work. Dr. Yalba, it's a, it's a Dr. deficit. Yalba, in his speech, said that, <laughs> look, in the matter of the uh, Anglogon Ashanti, for example, workers were laid off in different tranches. And he said when the workers protested, they brought in armed military and police to hit at them. And they thought that, well, workers have the right to protest yeah, if but, they but, feel but that they are going to lose their bread. Uh, yes, but you have the right. Let us also not uh, lose sight of the fact that the employer has also the right to, to protect its property. Mm. So if your protest is going to be the violent one or mm. is perceived to be the violent one, definitely. And you look, when workers are aggrieved, uh, the way they can demonstrate and act mm. uh, can be very unpredictable. Right. But if I may land on this note, quickly, so there is a global course. trend and we must come to accept it Which in Ghana. Which is what? Which is the former type of work is giving way for informalization in a way. Okay. Where people are employed as permanent workers, you were hired probably after you finish tech mm. at the age of 25. And the next time you, are, you expect to lose your job is when you turn 60. Okay. No. It is giving way on the, on the globe. It's not only in Ghana, where people are increasingly going for contract workers, piecemeal work, seasonal work, and that type of thing. And for me, it has its disadvantages and serious, advantages. Serious disadvantages. Highly skilled people don't want permanent employment. 
Even if they go for it, they are doing other jobs. Mm. Do you get it? It's a global trend. Highly skilled people like myself okay. and those sitting here, we want to be able to contract, to be contracted to do work here. Okay. To go over there, transport my skill okay. across sectors where it is needed, mm. not to be secured in just one place forever in my life. So that type of trend is giving way. And the time has come for us as Ghanaians to also know that, look, we need to be entrepreneurial. Mm. We need to also try and change the way we educate our people. Okay. The fact that you have been hired when you first got your employment, possibly when you were in your young age, mm -hmm. does not mean that you, the only time you can exit is when you are going on We'll, we'll come back and talk about way. whether or not so we, we need to avail ourselves to the, some of these things. The workforce has the requisite capacity and qualification to deal with some of the things you are talking about. But let, Mr. Blues, let me come to you now. The, the question of uh, workplace safety, which uh, engineer mentioned, we've heard many stories about people who work in factories, they get maimed by a machine, mm. uh, indecent, uh, you know, treatment, Ch chained, uh, chained, chained, chained you know, and, and beating <laughs> and all of that. And they stick with it, as somebody said, because a human being So they are trying to put up <laughs> mm -hmm. with what is there just to survive and keep body and soul together. On this May Day, what can they hope for? How do we fix that problem? Thank you. Uh, it's important to, to note that uh, the work environment must be safe. Mm -hmm and employers have a responsibility to ensure the safety of work. And workers also have a responsibility when they feel threatened to remove themselves from imminent danger at work. And go and do what? No, they, they complain. And report. And draw attention to that. If, if, the, if the, their complaints are not addressed, they remove themselves from the, the imminent dangerous situation okay. and report to the labor department. And we have labor departments all over the country and in all districts. We've had cases where people have reported uh, to, to, the, to, you know, duty bearers. Yes. And then we have had people from those side, the side of the duty bearers, go to blow the whistle and say, oh, Akwawe hey, is this man who came to report yeah, that, you. That's highly, because they are getting, that's highly they are getting paid it, it, yes. by these people. That's highly unprofessional. If, <laughs> if it's so but it happens. happens. That's yeah. the reality. That's highly unprofessional. And if any are doing that, I think they, they need to, they need to, stop that immediately and respect the confidentiality mm. that is inherent in their work. Right. But my colleague mentioned a global trend of work. Exactly. Uh, but when he mentioned some of the attributes of decent work, mm. he mentioned stability and security at work. Right. Now, does the global trend provide stability and security at work? No. It doesn't. Not at all. Uh -huh. <laughs> and therefore, it's not because it's a global trend that, that makes it something worth uh, emulating mm. but we have we have our own standards okay at work have we, our standards helped us our standards have helped but it's only that we we're not we're not ensuring they are they are strict adherence and implementation mm. yes hey for let's talk about uh negotiation because in a pre-May Day uh, forum organized by uh, Labour and the uh, Kempet <coughs> Foundation, they talk about the fact that just about 375,000 uh, of our contributors for SMIT uh, are, are earning about 300, 400 Ghana cities, hopefully <laughs> inadequate. Now, juxtapose that with how much people earn, how much they contribute, and what life they can hope for in the future. Tell me about it. Yeah, um, so you, you see, with, I mean, as far as uh, pension or a worker's pension is concerned, um, you could only fall on the fact that um, in our law, um, um, the minimum um, uh, salary that can be used for pension contributions is the minimum wage. Right. So once the minimum wage is set, there's little that we can do as a regulator. But if you look at um, the kind of benefit that uh, SNET in particular has been paying, it is quite always above what the uh, minimum pension, the minimum. Uh, they they subsidize sometimes. Yeah, it's, uh, so basically, what what SNED does every year is that they do what we call indexation, <coughs> uh, basically just to improve the purchasing power of the pensioner. 
So you find currently a pensioner, a minimum, uh, a minimum pensioner getting about 300 Ghana cities right. on the pension. And <laughs> and if if you look at the even the, the what can they do with that? By now the way? now if you look at the 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 history, the work history of this particular person, mm. you realize that this person was even earning a salary that is even lower than the 300 cities that uh, SNIT is providing. While he was in active was service. Was in active service. So, I mean, you find it, because what SNIT pays is more than minimum wage. Right. The 300 Ghana cities is actually more than minimum wage. Right. So you find a situation where this person actually earns um, something very low. Now, you, uh, there are instances mm -hmm. where somebody probably was working okay. and then left job. He, was, he earned a very low salary, say, in the 90s mm -hmm. and then in the 2000s. Now, when this person approaches SNIT, or he probably goes on pension, SNIT is still going to pay him the minimum pension, even right. though he contributed on a lower salary. Okay. So we, we as a regulator would only fall on the fact that a certain minimum wage has been agreed by government okay. and then we have to work on it. We, we don't really sort of get involved with the negotiation as far as we How, how do we uh, uh, raise the minds of the people who go into these negotiations? So you go for an interview, you go into a negotiation, they are offering you facts, allowances, uh, fuel allowance, clothing allowance, <laughs> and then your basic salary itself is on a very low. Do the workers know that their pensions will be calculated based on their basics and not all the embellishments <laughs> that come with the salary that make it look big? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, I mean, if you look at our setting, I think we, we prefer to spend money or enjoy money today than, I mean, later. I mean, you, you, you find people when they are working, okay. they prefer to even be paid their whatever even mm. supposed to be paid uh, towards ca pension. Can I interrupt a bit? Mm. The, the pension, according to the pension laws, does not say, and the regulations thereby doesn't say that when you earn allowances and then they are excluded from, you know, deducting mm. the amount from it. It's, it's your earnings. Mm. Well, no. Once it's your mm. earnings, there are certain aspects of allowances that people exclude. No. But it's your earnings. And if we are using the proper definition yeah. Okay. Yeah. of earnings, yeah. you ought not to exclude those allowances. No. Um, so, so, so let me... Let me Thank um, you. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so um, what, what the, the Act 76 is actually prescribed is actually your basic salary. Right. It's actually excluded these earnings. Yeah. Okay. So you, you would have to now work with the basic salary to be able to compute um, the earnings. So I think that it's, 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 it's an issue that has come up for discussion and I think currently mm. it's being looked into yeah. whether or not we should be able to add allowances to um, what do you call it, the basic salary. Mm. But you know, it, it, it how, how far have we gotten with that conversation? Uh, it just kick started. And, and what, what I know of uh, is not a discussion that's supposed to be left for the employee alone. Okay. You also need to understand whether there will be uh, capacity from employers to be able to pay pension on that level. Mm. It has to go through a negotiation right. process to be able to do that. So mm. it must not be done from a one-sided one uh, point of view. You need to get also employers. I mean, I I if you're going to consolidate salaries okay. um, of, of workers to, to pay pension, mm. then again, you're going to raise the, the government wage bill. I mean, this is a reality. Right. You, you're going to raise the government wage bill mm. by that consolidation. Because currently, you are just using basic salary. Once you add the allowances, and we need to find out where government is in the position What, to, what is the best practice around the world? Well, the best practices um, requires that you, 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 you use the earnings. So why don't we use it? That's best practice. We're trying to grow global. Yeah, yeah we, we, we're trying. But then again, we also mm -hmm. need to look for, I mean, in terms of sustainability. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you, you, can promise, you can promise, but you cannot deliver. I mean, you, you've had instances <coughs> where, I mean, employers will probably will default on some of these things when, mm. when it's too high for them. I mean, we've had instances where currently SNIT has put a lot of employers, I mean, before the court. Mm. I mean, they've, they've given these promises that they, they're going to pay even on the basic salary and mm. they, they're not paying. So we, we need to, it, it has to be a conversation that must not just sit with employers, employees. We need to have sort of... Um, employees and all the stakeholders involved. It's May Day. When we come back from the break, we'll share some staggering figures from the uh, slate with you, and then we'll ask the big question, whether our workforce are qualified and they have the capacity to, to earn what they are crying for after the break. Welcome back and thank you very much. This is our uh, program for the May Day celebrations. We'll be crossing over now to the official parade. But my guest in studio, Hayford Amankwa, is the Manager Standards and Compliance at the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, Set Abloso, is a Labour Consultant and Executive Director of the Labour Policy International. And uh, Engineer Ben Arthur is a Labour Consultant. Gentlemen, welcome back from the break. Let's thank start you. off, uh, Engineer, with you on this particular one. Let's talk about... 
uh, our qualification. By the way, I'll start with the uh, pre-May Day Forum uh, statistics uh, by Dr. John Ofori Tenkong. He is the boss at SNIT. He says that uh, about 25% of our active contributors of SNIT earn salaries of less than 400 Ghana CDs. SNIT's uh, February 2019 data put a total of 1.5 million active contributors at a figure of 400 Ghana CDs. 375,000 uh, of SNIT contributors earn less than 400 Ghana CDs. 750,000 uh, of uh, SNIT workers earn 1,000 CDs. Less than that, by the way. 25% of our SNIT pensioners receive 300, 400 minimum pension, as has been mentioned already. 78% of pensioners get less than 1,000 CDs in salaries. 71% of them uh, are in active service earn less than 1,800 CDs. Only 4% of contributing, those who are contributing uh, on salaries of 5,000 CDs and above. That's the figure we have. So SNIT has had to subsidize, as has been said here over and over again. It goes without saying, Eugenia, that we clearly have uh, a, a defect in the area of qualification, specialization, to be able to give you the impetus to earn a certain amount of money that will give you a comfortable life in future. Is that is my assertion correct? Yes, correct to a very large degree. But when we talk about state pension, that is not all that pension is about. Right. We have tiers one, two, and three. We'll come to that. that so, so what we are talking about is the basic mm -hmm. mandatory. Mm -hmm. okay. But we have the tier two, mm. which is the occupational, which is also mandatory for former sector workers. You right. know. We'll so, talk about that. so when somebody is earning 400, 300 uh, in terms of benefits, right. it does not mean that is all that they are getting they are getting mm -hmm. in terms of pension so let's put it in in that context mm -hmm. but, coming but, back but there are also those who are working and this tier two tier three is not done for them so that's their sad reality really uh, yeah it depends on the kind of is it when we talk about work we have those who are doing piecemeal we are those who are doing the casual workers mm -hmm. and the rest you know who as per the arrangement is difficult for anybody to call himself or herself an employer mm. in that case to even on daily basis be right. doing that. Mm. The onus is on that individual mm. to also know that I need to secure my future mm. and that out of what I am earning, okay. I need to pay for my pension. Mm. So it is not always the case that somebody is with the responsibility of paying on your behalf. Okay. Th that's why I give the statistics about 86% of all workers in Ghana are the the in the, are in the private informal sector. Mm. What it means is that a large chunk of our workers, in terms of numbers, have the responsibility on their <coughs> own to pay for their own pensions. Right. Do Knowing they do that? Yeah, they are, they are not doing that because possibly the education has not been much mm. and possibly they have not also seen the benefit in doing that. But in that sector too, we have employers. Okay. We have people who are self-employed with employees. Mm. And then we have the self-employed. Okay. If we're a hawker on the street, you can equally pay your pensions. Right. But you see, the mechanisms, the accessibility, the education, the mm. flexibility with which you'll be able to pay your pension is okay. too rigid. For example, now, <laughs> this is my banking hall. Yeah. I should be able to just pay, pay okay. on a monthly basis or maybe from my Momo account, mm. we must have an arrangement. I cannot talk much because we right. have developed, you know, okay. a proposal and an app for that. Okay. So on your farm, and we have also lost sight of the fact that we have Ghanaians working outside mm. who can also pay their pensions. Yeah. Okay. But we don't have any mechanism whatsoever in this country to ensure after that all these years. whilst I'm working, oh yes, after all these years, some, we some have some developed, you know, some a proposal it, and a mechanism. I'm not uh, marketing my fair right. here. Mm. I'm only speaking to the fact that there are a lot of things that we have. There are people who are working online. Mm. There is electronic cash. Mm. They earn their salaries online, everything mm. online. We don't have any mechanism <coughs> for capturing these kind of workers. So we have not opened all our tentacles as mm. far as pensions are concerned. Mm. Look, farmers have been able to educate their children. Who told you that they are unable to pay pensions? Cocoa farmers. But we see them, we have still classified them in this age mm. that they are informal sector 
workers. So one of our biggest challenge mm. is the way we call a certain group of workers former sector workers and the rest informal. I, is it by qualification, education or what? What? what how do we classify them? I, I think it's by orientation. Mm. Okay. Where, where our focus is, for example, I always urge government mm. to take this up because when you have the informal sector, workers contributing, mm. and a large chunk of money sits in the informal sector. If you have 86% of those carrying the labor market being in the informal mm. sector, what it means is that even if you are biased, mm -hmm. you must be biased towards, towards them. them. And if, for example, the orientation of our public sector is to have peaceful savings, when I say peaceful savings, mm. pension funds everywhere, it's a peaceful savings for every nation. Okay. So if our orientation is to have a peaceful savings to develop this country, then we will be able to motivate our people to pay more pensions, mm. whether formal or informal sector, because that money will be sitting down for a very long time. Right. Government can use it, the trust, trustees and the rest can also you know, invest that money mm. in a lot of our sectors. So by the time you need your lump sum or you need your annuity or whatever you might call it, we would have used it, there is more profit on it, and that you also get better benefit. So our orientation also speaks to, it to, speaks to you it. know, mm. to, to, to example, so let's look at SLIT in itself. Some yeah. have criticized SLIT and said that, look, they are only interested in giving our pensions. But their nomenclature says social security and national insurance trust. The social <laughs> and the secure nature of how they care about workers. For example, we have had a case where somebody has worked for a very long time uh, his late contributions were not being de were not deducted, and he only gets to realize this when he is on retirement. He goes there, even though there's a desk mandated to ensure that these things are obliged. He's told that well, he should have checked to come and say, and that they can't take the blame. For example, a worker <laughs> say, <laughs> "You earn a salary to ensure that I'm I'm safe and secure." Why are you telling me now that it should have been my work? What were you earning your salary for? Slate in itself, are they delivering on their mandates as they should from where you sit as a labor expert? Slate, slate is a huge problem. It will need a, a total overhaul. Really? Now, in the situation you are mentioning, if Slate notices that over a period of time, contributions are not coming in, it's important for their inspectors to follow up okay. and check from the members or the member company, the registered company, why there is a default. And then the law provides them uh, the right to even prosecute mm. on default. Yes. But you see, SNET is not being operated right. How so? Otherwise, yes. Otherwise, one would not the director general would not be talking about subsidizing pension <laughs> because the money in SNIT is for workers. Now, in the factors of production, we are always told it's capital, land capital, and labor. Mm. But labor has its own capital. Labor generates capital as well, mm. and SNIT is huge. It's workers' money. SNIT has to manage the funds, mm. invest wisely, and use the returns exclusively mm. for the benefits of those on the road, the members of the trust, right. who they erroneously call customers. So you see, SNIT has no customers, but it's operating a customer service department. <laughs> and you enter every SNIT office, there's a sign customer service here. But you have no customers. So it means you've got the you've got the concept wrong. You've got the concept completely wrong. And you are doing a lot of profligate expenditure. The director general was going around universities selling SNETs as a product to university university students. He has no business going around doing that. What should he have done? Good. He needs to chase persons who have stolen SNET funds. A 2001 forensic audit by Deloitte and Touche, Worldwide Investments and Our Consultants, established 
that over 18 billion cities mm. had been stolen 21 million and over us dollars had been stolen as well as another equivalent in dutch marks they are not chasing this but they are quick to prosecute employers who in difficult operations are unable to pay to pay uh, uh, deductions on behalf of the, their members so they need to refocus now even with the data general going around all over there are senate offices if students need to be educated people can even literally walk from a senate office to a university campus mm. it doesn't take the director general traveling around and then saying for instance that senate wants to uh, some uh, curriculum de uh, development by uh, ministry of education mm. they want to teach pensions at a lower level what kind of business is but that they get it wrong they get it completely wrong and it's happening because you see the position of director general is not advertised mm. if it's advertised and expressions of interest are invited and persons apply for instance they are shortlisted by the public service and interviewed mm. before appointment some of these things will not happen so you say we should depoliticize we should depoliticize it completely and workers need to rise up to the to the realization that the money in the trust is this. Why, it's not for the why state. Why isn't TUC speaking about some of these things? Because they claim to love the workers and to be their voice and to be advocating for them. But they have never made such a point. Yeah. Maybe they've not made it loud enough. <laughs> they've, not, they've not made it loud enough and one can't tell why. Because th these are not matters to compromise on. We are no government you see, in state organizations, we pay on behalf of the workers. Mm -hmm. As soon as the money lands in the trust, it's to the credit of the member, right. not a customer, member. Okay. So it's not for, there's no government money there. And, and you see, that raises the ridiculous question of uh, a prosecution by uh, the Attorney General's Department mm. of uh, some past executive of uh, SNIT, right, and they are being charged with causing financial loss to the states That's when the right. money doesn't belong to the states. Mm. So the, the attorney general's department itself has all the wrong. Wow. The money doesn't belong to the states. Mm. Can you charge for causing financial loss to the states? Let me finally, uh, mm. if I may make an intervention mm. here, I agree with him to a very large extent. But if you read our constitution, mm. if you read our labor laws, the pension laws, and maybe it's the pension laws that might have to be changed. Mm. But government has a responsibility to, to social protection. It's well. a responsibility. And will not yes. be able to Agree. sit Agree. outside the snit fence mm. yeah. and look at individuals, handle matters, and when it gets worse, we will call on government like men's gold and the rest, you know. So government has a responsibility. Right. Government, it even though... It, it doesn't make it this. Government it, do... Uh -huh. No, it's, it's not government... You yes. know, that's why it on the board... It has a fiduciary responsibility, uh -huh. fine. That's why yes. on the board you have... Uh, government you, you have government reps, yes. you have labor yes. and the rest. So I need to... To, to put to it in right. the government has a responsibility. Right. Of course, so shall we? Yes. 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 wants to make yeah. that yeah. Me, I, think, well. I think I think um, um, Seth's points um, mm -hmm. um, needs to be also looked at from um, what what we have come as, as a nation. You know, um, Snit previously was was on his own. Mm. I mean, Snit never had any regulator uh, to sort of uh, yeah. supervise them. Right now, there's been a lot of things that are happening now uh, just to be able to bring Snit back to. I mean, where we want SNET to be. Um, um, and like he mentioned, I mean, um, SNET currently has a certain composition that is expected to get SNET run the way we want it to be. I mm. mean, you've got four labor reps on SNET. Uh, you've got a government rep, and then you've got the director. So SNET is not just for, I mean, it's not a one-man show where okay. you find mm. a director. You, you need to, I mean, go through a, a board to get a policy to be able to run SNET. So we, we're doing a lot, and like I said, the regulator is currently scrutinizing SNET. Mm. I mean, um, just recently. How, this how, how so uh, when, for example, in the matter of the software, you saw yeah. how much money <laughs> we're told that we lost and <laughs> no, no, really nothing is happening. No, I, I think that that, matter, that should be a major concern to all of us. No, that matter, matter, I think, I think that matter, that, that matter is in court. It's in court. Now, and and I, I wouldn't want yeah. to yeah. Yeah. So, right, so what, 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 I wanted to ask a question. Sorry for cutting it. Yeah. When you say SNIT is subsidizing 
uh, pensions. I have been hearing that. Uh, where are they getting the money from to yeah. subsidize? Well, the director general said it that they are subsidizing. Yeah. You know, from, from, he did from which tell funds? Us, he did not no, tell it, us it, where it, 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 it is. I think, I think, from, I think from which funds? Be but but no. you mentioned that they have uh, investments and assets. Yes. And, and from so, whose yeah. money? No, <laughs> that is the investment. That is what they are supposed to do. Right. Collect, <laughs> invest. invest. Prudently bring bring the dividends and bring the returns and, yes and, give all of and then that's the point because it's the is the people's money yeah. right. that you are investing so you you are you are asking where they are getting their subsidies yeah, that, yeah, no, they yeah. can't say they are subsidizing they are not subsidizing I, 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 I don't think it's a term it's a matter of I mean um, I mean I think it, probably the word that was used I mean uh, okay. basically what it means is that I mean you probably you getting more than what you would have I mean perfect in, okay. I mean had, if you hadn't so it's not subsidy so it is basically yeah at one point at one point you find a uh, sort of a minimum pension earning more than a minimum wage. So right. obviously, that he's, be, he's a bit... Let, let me yeah. ask you this, uh, Hayford. <laughs> so there's the question also <laughs> of uh, the Damn. casual worker who works for six months, for example, in uh, a factory. Mm. That's what he's supposed mm -hmm. to do. And then mm. he is either confirmed or otherwise. But you have a, a, a trail of having people work for six months mm. And then when the six month expires, mm. they renew the casual working status <laughs> for six months and then they renew it. That person will be a casual worker perhaps for a long time. We have had people yeah. who have done yeah. that for 10 yeah. years. Yeah. They That's have no future, abuse. really. Does that concern you? And what are you doing about it from where you sit as yeah, compliance um, and standards? Okay, so as far as we are concerned, whether you are casual mm. or whatever, once there's an employee-employer employee, employee relationship, you are required to pay pension. That's right. It doesn't matter even if your employment is for just for a day. Mm. Once you're, um, um, the only way that probably you could run away from not paying pension is if you're earning minimum, less than minimum wage, which is also, I mean, against the law. Which is also yeah. So we, we, as far as we are concerned, um, no, I mean, once there's an employer-employee relationship established, then immediately uh, it triggers a, a the laws are there; they don't work. So what, what I'm saying, you know, uh, we, we've got boundaries. I mean, mm. as a regulator, we we don't regulate labor issues. Right. Okay. We we only fall on labor whatever happens, there, right. and then we, we 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 run with them. Right. So we so would expect that these other yes. um, agencies will do what they are expected of, what is expected mm. of them, so that we can we can run with them. Because technically, I it will be difficult for me as a regulator to go and enforce. An employee and employer sort of, um, uh, but but you can regulate that regulate that uh, authority to go and enforce that portion. We, we we collaborate with them. We do collaborate with them. I mean, there are instances where we fall on the labor department for certain uh, policy. I mean, issues. But but like I said, I mean, you you've got to work within your law. I mean, you you can't you can't go beyond what what otherwise you you'll be overstepping your your, your power. No F yeah. Finally, Julia, we'll take a break. But mm. finally, there's also the this is bothering my mind. We are talking about pensions. Uh, Smith takes <coughs> your contributions. He says, well, he's making investments. For example, affordable housing units, mm. and the people who contribute to Smith mm. are not able to afford what their money has been used to construct, and then you find that in the <laughs> end, it goes elsewhere. That's also uh, an improper fraction, if you will. Well, what well, do you say about well, it? Well, mathematically speaking, I will not call it improper <laughs> fraction. But we, we, must, <coughs> we must understand that f if you look at the previous you know, pension regimes and then with the passage of the Pensions Act 766, you could see that the, we have improved the system to a very large extent, especially mm -hmm. when MPRA also came into the system. Some Sanity. The young man who earns, I'm, I'm, who I'm earns okay. all his money, saves 20000 to go and give to a certain landlord somewhere and cannot have a house of his own, doesn't have a peace yeah, of I'm, mind to I'm deliver on the job, I'm will not be happy when you say that. No, no but I'm, 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 being, I'm being fair to the fact because we have come from a certain background mm -hmm. and we are saying that, yes, we are not there yet, mm -hmm. but at least for the regulations that we have, if it's well enforced, we will be better off. But a lot of the implementation mm. comes, you know, a lot of the goodwill must come from the private sector. Mm. Sometimes we, we mention too much of the former sector right. and the few irregularities there. But a lot of the people mm. who are in the informal sector must sit up right. and must be making their contributions. Coming back to whether the buildings or the housing units are affordable mm. or not, SNET must ensure a certain balancing act. Okay. Protecting or giving benefits to its contributors. Its members. Mm. Do you get it? Mm. Or members. 
and then making sure that the investment will yield mm. good returns mm. for the same members. So if the member cannot afford it, and the market situation is such that mm. you are not going to use their contribution to subsidize what they are going to enjoy, okay. then those who can afford it must come in for them to get the benefits so that they can continue to give you your pensions. So it's a balancing act, and I cannot fault SNIT, mm. but what I can do by telling them they should do is that we have to more, more, more or less use the research done by BRI in terms of getting us affordable houses. There's no point in building what we call affordable housing. I'm a civil engineer, I build right. buildings, mm. and I know the components that make them very expensive. Right. A lot of the housing components are imported, very expensive, mm. and for the, even the middle income earners, it's not that affordable. Right. So if we want to build affordable houses the way we want to build them, mm. we may have to be looking at where we build them. Yeah. You see, the there are a lot of people who after they have retired, do not want to live in Accra. Right. But all because they could only build in Accra during their active service. They are stuck here. Right. So if you are looking at affordable houses, the housing schemes, the designs, mm. the finishes, the materials, mm. that must go into it. And possibly SNIT must support those who are building the houses. Right. If we can get certain exemptions in taxes and the rest, it also help in making those houses yeah, affordable. Right. If we don't we take some of these steps, yeah, we right. will not yeah. be able to I build think, affordable I think, I think houses. We need to look in at practice. Um, this issue of affordable. I mean, you know, it wasn't the initial plan of SNE to go into this particular housing project. Okay. It was something that was started by the, the, the I mean, the previous government, mm -hmm. and I think for some reason those projects could not be completed. Now SNE went into the project and took those projects at market rate. Mm. Okay. So technically, at that point. I mean, you, 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 you will not force SNIT, I mean, as to whether or not these could be, I mean, these houses could be, I mean, could be bought by these. But that's uh, yeah. money wasted away, really. No, it's, so, 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 <laughs> exactly, that comes to the point that yes, you, you because cannot. because if I remember, I'm it, contributing, and mm. you're using money. No, no, the point is that if you, if you take a project at a market rate, you, you cannot sell it below. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, below the market. So what why, you go, why go into so, it? So, so, so they, now they've gone into it and they're trying to sell it to be able to exit with a profit. I mean, I, I, if you do that, then probably you're just going to uh, lose pensioners' money or the, or for, on the basis of the fact that you want to give affordable house to the pensioners. Uh, so, so that, is, that, is, that is the point that uh, I think okay. we need to The first need to option then is to give it to, to uh, first option to members. Right. Yeah. Yes. But they don't. Members first. Members first. And then and others. Then others. No, members first, but at the, at the commercial rate. You see, because you have taken a project at the commercial rate. Okay, I, if it was at the if it why was go in there to take no, it at a commercial rate no, in the first place? The point was that I mean, it was it was I think uh, sort of a, I mean uh, arrangement between state and government. Okay, but but again, if you look at even affordable housing, there, there are a lot of things that have been created under the act where pensioners could also take advantage of under the mm. tier two and the tier three. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll, you could we'll use your, we'll talk about that. You after could the break. yeah exactly. So we'll talk about okay. that after the break. After the break, there's more. We get into tier one, tier two, tier three, and all the issues in between. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back and thank you very much. My guest in the studio here for the Mankwai's Manager Standards and Compliance at the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, Slet Ambloso, is a labor consultant and the executive director of Labor Policy International Engineer Ben Arthur is a labor consultant. Gentlemen, welcome back. L let's zoom now into tier one, tier two, tier three. Yeah. Are workers better off under these optional pension schemes? Start yeah. with you. Yeah, uh, I, 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 think, I think I think I think they are they are they are better off. I mean, if you look at the um, the benefit under the three tier pension scheme, I mean, you've got up to a total of um, thirty five percent tax exemption, which mm. was not available mm. under the PNDC law two four seven, which okay. which only operated SNET. Okay. Mm. So again, you've got an improved qualifying period of fifteen years instead of doing twenty years. Okay. I mean, under the previous law, mm. you would have done twenty years to qualify for. A SNET pension. Now you are you are allowed to do 15 years mm. to be able to qualify for the monthly pension. Right. Again, mm. there's also this aspect of mortgage where you can use your pension to actually mortgage for a primary residence. So mm. it is quite improved. And I mean, if you take the tax benefit alone, I mean that is quite substantial. Okay. I mean, if you put through 35 percent of an employee <laughs> basic salary through a tax system, mm. then then you 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 could you could get it. Okay. Em the empl employee even benefiting even at the payroll level okay. and then get the um, incentive through uh, pension as well. And again, if, if you withdraw your pensions um, prior to 10 years under the tier 3, 
you suffer tax. But if you wait 10 years, you enjoy the tax on, on your pension. Has this, has this message watered, been watered down to the people yeah, uh, we, who, who will be contributing we, or who will become done, members? Look, we've gone around the 10 regions of Ghana. We've done a lot of sensitization all now, the way from now 2010. Yeah, now 16. Now, yeah, now 16 <laughs> regions, sorry. So we, we've done a lot of sensitization. <laughs> but you know, it, it has to do with our, our attitude. <laughs> I mean, people don't take interest in their pension until the reality dawns on them. I mean, you've got to look. We, we've even written to institutions to invite us at their staff their best to, to sort of give them education. And okay. some of them even don't even, I mean, give us that opportunity. Mm. So we, we expect that, yes, we are a regulator. We will try as much as we want to do, I mean, uh, um, <coughs> do our mandate. But then we expect people to take interest in pension. Mm. I mean, there are a lot of radio, and I, I'm sure you, your, your station probably is currently running some of our education material um, right. programs. Mm. But the, the, the reality is that people don't take pension serious. And mm. it's not a Ghanaian thing, it's a global thing. People get to get, I mean, interested in pension when they actually age 58 or wow. even 59. Yeah, that, that is a reality. <laughs> and and we, we, we're really working on this particular, I mean, issue. Do we have timelines to this? Um, we, we, you know, as for education and sensitization, it's not an ending problem. But you want to achieve a certain result over a certain period, do we have a timeline for traveling around the country, uh, seeking audience, yeah. playing materials, and educating people? Do you have a timeline to say, oh, by 2025, we want to have such an appreciable number who understand this, who are contributing efficiently and effectively, and are getting a better pension or guaranteed? If you look at when we started, most of the education as I said, was being run by the regulator. I mean, we, we had the support from uh, the Swiss government uh, through uh, um, what we call um, uh, an agency called SECO. Okay. Now, if you look at the numbers prior to um, um, the Act 7 sexes, I mean, <coughs> we, we've seen a quite an improvement. I mean, uh, before uh, 2010, Senate had just about less than a million on their on their on their on their on their scheme, mm -hmm. and now we're doing about 1.5 million. Okay. And based on this education that we've done. I mean, we've seen a lot of enrollment. Okay. Now, what we are doing is that the regulator has done a lot. Now, we're putting a lot of respect on the, on the corporate trustees. Mm. Now, as part of their renewals, what we, we, we seek to do is that we want to see how they also send in information okay. and education into. So, I mean, come 2020, mm. we would want to see the numbers growing. All right. I mean, yeah. Uh, so let, let's look at this. Uh, so, what will be the impact of these schemes? Mm. on the worker because I am contributing, I'm working. When I go on pension, what will be the impact? Will I be any better off? It, it's designed clearly to make every worker better off. And Are we going the right and way? It's, 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 uh, it's a right path. Okay. But the problem is the outcomes that we've seen so far. You have a problem with the management uh, of it? Management of it, yes, problematic. One, because we've deliberately excluded, for instance, SNITs okay. from managing tier two. And I thought that the law could make it flexible, said that SNITs may, if it's prepared so to do, enter the second tier. Because it has the, it has the okay. largest capacity mm. spread, yeah. and spread mm. in, in this country. So we may have to rethink that. But again, we have, uh, like my colleague said, 30% of your uh, earning excluded from taxation mm. if, you, if you maximize uh, contribution to, to your social security okay. and pension. In which case, for the second and third tier, okay. you can do this and it's tax-free. Mm. I'm aware that there are some companies who are erroneously taxing workers uh, uh, provident fund Probably contributions, fund, right. and that is that is very wrong. They, it is they, yes, they they don't need to, especially so when the the quantum put together is is not above thirty five percent of their earnings. Mm. Yes, so that's wrong. So that is completely wrong, uh, and, and they need to they need to mm. to adjust. In the, the one okay, problem sorry. that no. has come up also is that uh, state institutions have defaulted contribution to the tier two mm. and and in fact it's one reason why i think in 2014 or so the, the uh, law had to be amended 
otherwise we would have been in terrible terrible uh, we would have had a terrible situation <laughs> so uh state institutions need to contribute uh remit their contributions okay. timelessly right so uh the the system can work. Let, let's go to Takradi uh, before we come to Engineer Ben Eric here, which is standing by yeah. the Jubilee Park. Let's see what's happening there. The stand for the closer, you can see the stand for the plantation in Ghana Limited, which is at the Boise in the Wasa East District. You can also see STC, the Health Workers Services Union. You can also see the Maritime and Dock Workers Union. And you know, recently they've had some problems with regards to the MPS deal where they believe that some of the workers will lose their jobs should that contract take effect. I'm also currently at Gridco stand where they say Gridco is viable. Government pay our ESLA and also lack of maintenance means small doom so. Energy minus grid core is equals to doom so. Grid core is bleeding. Since today is for the workers, I want to find out from the workers how their lives and how their working conditions have been for the past year. I'm currently at the stand of PDS and some of the placards read PDS, your new electricity service provider. PDS here to improve the quality of customer service. I'm not sure some customers would be too pleased with this particular um, inscription because over the months since PDS came into effect, power has not been that stable. Uh, tell me how your condition has been since the, this year began. Um, thank you very much and good morning to all workers and especially for staff of PDS. PDS, we are here to serve. Um, our journey to the current situation of PDS started somewhere 2014 when government decided that he wanted to uh, give PDS to a UCG to a private uh, man. And therefore, we as a worker decided that no, we, we are better, we will be better safe to manage our own affairs rather than to give the whole distribution sector to a private man. But we fight and fight. There's no way you can fight government. And therefore, what we needed to do was to ensure that our condition of service is incorporated into the FANA RFP. Secondly, um, from, from the beginning, we, are told, we were told that it is 25 years. And five, uh, the, first five, the first five years, nobody is going home. But we begin to ask questions as to, after the first five years, what happened? We were not giving any credible answer. But when the new government came, we pushed and pushed. And then we have our um, the 25 years being reduced to 20 years. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I also moved to the Ghana Water Company Limited for him to also tell us about working conditions so far. Oh, so far, so good. Working conditions has stabilized ever since AVR left and GB, GWCL took total control. We believe all has been well. Our major concern, as we speak now, is the desalination. We are called the desalination plants at the Teshin Uwa enclaves. We are of the view that currently Ghana Water is trying to produce and distributing water to the Teshin Uwa enclaves. We are calling on the government to abrogate that contract because it's a total drain to Ghana water revenue. That's our plea to the government. I should take a second look at it and trade it off from the shoulders of Ghana water. It's a major concern to us. How about your SNIT contributions? SNIT contributions, the second tier is working all right, but we expect that it should be put in the proper investment. So that at the end of the day, if the worker is not is going home, it shouldn't be a problem for him or her assessing a second tier. Three contribution has been okay for us. We don't have much problem on that. But the matter of the investment, where it is being invested, we make sure that if the worker is due to take his due share, he should be able to, to have it without any hindrance. 
Thank you very much. I'll move on to this gentleman. Um, you are with the private sector, yeah. Plantation Softener of Ghana. Um, tell us about your working conditions. Uh, our working conditions is cool, but we are trying to, because we have been in the existence for six years now, and as a new company, you know what it means. Gradually, we know we will get there. But one thing that uh, I always think is that the media, you people, should come to our place and see the good things that we are doing there. For, for six years now, we haven't even seen any media. I, I will come to that, we'll come to that, but this, yeah. this moment is for you. I, I also want to find out from you, will you say you are happy as a worker? Yes, of course. First and foremost, we have a job, which is secure. Huh? And we know for oil palm plantation uh, and rubber, we have a job for the next 40, 50 years. So we are urging the government to go into oil palm plantation and rubber too. Okay, thank you very much. I will also come to Gritco. I want to find out from them how their working conditions have been so far. And also whether they are happy as workers. Um, you work with the VRA. Tell me, are you happy as a Ghanaian worker? Okay, he, he doesn't want to speak with us. I'm with the Teu, I'm with the Teachers and Educational Workers Union. Um, Ma'am, are you happy working under Teu? I'm not. Because Why are you not happy? I'm not happy because we, look at this. We, we um, as at now, the government has given um, some money for workers of uh, teaching. 80% for teachers and 20% for non-teaching. It's very, it's very odd. It's not, it's not good for us to take non-teaching, 20% and teachers receiving 80%. It's very, it's very, it's very, it's very, it's very something. It's not good. So we are not happy about it. Yes. So what do you want to see government do about it? We want government to give us 40 and give teachers 60. Yes. We want, we want government to give teachers 60 percent and then non teaching 40 percent. Yes. Um, also, how about you also? Ah, me, me, dear Rebecca, me, I'm a supporter girls. I'm paying a town, young kitchen staff, and what we are, especially, sir, double strike by you. are five teachers, double, 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 also kitchen. They be, and they pay, and so I did be a form, breaks allowance, and send car. Open hospital, our bills, this is one of the woods here. Yes, let's say, I buy no ocean on your baby, yes, sir, kitchen for a buckle strike. I'm here at I'm here with the GPHA workers and in recent times they've had problems with the MPSD. I want you to tell me why are you in red? Because we are serious because we are serious the MPS is collapsing Ghana for the Harbors Authority. We are not ready for any foreign country, any foreign company to take our job from us. We are not ready because 1,400 people are going to lose their work. We are not ready for that. Thank you. What about you? Also? The whole MPS is fraud. The procurement process, they do not pass the proper procurement process. And we are against it. We are saying we are calling upon the government that oh, he should listen to our cry. And he should send the minister, the board chairman, he should call them to order. Thank you very much. So, yes, oh, I'm Jafaru. We are grief workers of GPHA. We are calling on the, uh, the, the, the minister and the president to review this contract about MPS and GAPOA. Please, we are begging the minister and uh, we, we are begging the president. But for some Pofu and Co, we are telling them, the president says he's a listening government. So we are pleading on behalf of him to, to review this contract or else many people are going home and we don't want it like that. So we are pleased, even if you are working, yes. Hey, hey, hey. You are still at the Takrade Jubilee grounds where this year's May Day celebration is being marked. We are currently at the stand of the Civil and Local Government Staff Association, CLOSAC, and I want to find out from them how their working conditions are. 
tell me about your working condition. Our working condition is, hmm, that's the word I can say. Hmm. What about you? It's not good. Tell us about your working condition. Uh, very bad. You know, the opponent won't go and cry. You won't go and Sinitinu so akwa atasu ni dozu to sinitinu to mo ba ne ya sinitinu on koso ka kama yeah so these are some of the concerns by some um so these are some of the concerns from some of the workers assembled here at the Jubilee Grounds marking this year's May Day celebration. You, you hear from them that they are not too happy with their working conditions. My name is Eric Kiroje reporting live from Takradi here in the from the Jubilee Grounds. And that's Eric Yawejay there, uh, bringing us live pictures from the Jubilee Park in Takradi. The workers say, Ijumano, uh, uh, you know, but uh, you know, quickly take a bite on the uh, tier one, two, and three, uh, you know, briefly. Yes. Mm. Uh, um, I, think, I think there was a statement that was made by SET to the effect that there's been some default on the tier two. Mm. Um, I, that has been paid. I mean, if you look at the, uh, there was some government indebtedness to the tier two that has been paid with a bond now. So, I mean, currently, uh, government is on. I mean, is on. I mean, the payment is coming through. I mean, what? So I think I need to just okay. Yeah. Yeah. Engineer, quickly, so that we can wrap up uh, nicely. Well, uh, for, for for us as a nation, it's good news when we had the multi-tier pension, you know, scheme, and it's, well, it's one of the best schemes that mm. you can have, you know, in the world, the multi-tier. But what we haven't done too well is to to get the benefit of it by the masses mm. because of the large informality. Mm. When I say the <coughs> multi-tier, there are a lot of benefits. My colleague Hayford had already mentioned a number of them. But there's mm. one thing that people ought to take advantage of. Apart from the fact that whether you are a formal sector worker or in the informal sector, you mm. have the mandatory you know, tier one, which is the basic you know, pension contributions that you have to make. We also have the tiers two and three. Right. You will be able to use tier two to be a guarantee mm. for house, for loan, for many other services that you need. Mm. The the basic one you cannot use it as a guarantee. Okay. But the tier two. So if you are making your tier two contributions, whether you want to do it as an individual or a corporate entity is doing it on your behalf. It in yours to your benefit because mm. you can use it, for example, if you want to go for a loan mm. or you want to purchase a house, but you don't have anything to give as security, the, your contribution can be given. And then the voluntary tier three, mm. which whether you are a private, sorry, you are a former sector worker or not, you are also allowed to make such contributions. And that one is to your discretion. Mm. The amount and the rest is to your discretion. It is also a lump sum that will help you. So it's like a tripod okay. kind of system. <coughs> For the informal sector, that is where they can benefit. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking to taxi drivers today. You are a taxi driver. You have been driving somebody's taxi for a very long time. Mm. Nothing stops you from making your contributions. For example, the, the voluntary tier three. If you have been making such contributions, maybe mm. 20, 40 Ghana cities per month, and you have been driving somebody's taxi for 10 years and so, you would have saved enough mm. to use it as a guarantee to get your own taxi right. on a higher purchase or what, whatever mm. the scheme might be. So we stand to benefit. It's a multi-tier scheme, but the education is low. The, 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 question, People, mm. the question, sorry, the question that comes up then is, how much do I aim to be dividing my money into... Three parts. Let, 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 let me give you a scenario. So I end, I end for example, 700 Ghana cities or 600 uh, Is it Ghana a month or so? Yes. But interestingly, in the informal sector, mm. apart from the crop farmers who are the, the most vulnerable mm. as far as so work is concerned, mm. they are the most vulnerable. The rest, let's take artisans, for example. Most artisans earn more than 
a lot of civil servants. Right. Can you imagine earning 70 Ghana CDs a day yeah. and in a month you are able to do 20 days in a month of work? Mm. You will be able to make a contribution of 40 Ghana CDs a month. Mm. So one day, one pay for you in one day <coughs> alone can pay that 40 Ghana. Right. So a lot of people can make that contribution. Okay. But as whether their monies will be secured, whether they will get the benefit or not, that mm. is where I think people are afraid. Mm. But I can say that the mm. education has not gone too down, especially in the informal sector it where we have a lot of money. private sector that's managing that, that portion of the, the tier two? It, it's, it's the, for tier two, it's not, a, it's not a question of the private sector mm. or not. It's still mandatory. Right. As for tier two, it's mandatory. Mm. It's not as if mm. <laughs> you can run away from it. Right. It's just like the, in fact, it's an occupational, more or less, uh, scheme. scheme. Okay. I hope you get it. Right. So you are not running away from it, but tier three is voluntary. Voluntary, okay. And wherever you are, whether you are selling charcoal, whether you are a shoeshine boy, or whatever you do, whether you are cook a house up, whatever you do, mm. if you are being paid uh, from the, on the, uh, the, 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 the tabletop, uh, 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 let's say <coughs> 20 Ghana CDs a day, mm. 40 Ghana CDs a day, you are uh, by day, you are going to weed on somebody's farm. Whatever you earn, mm. I am certain that if you care about your future, mm. you should be able to make a contribution. Okay. We'll take a break. Our last one, I'm sure. When we return, we'll wrap up the conversation. We're asking the question after the break, how do we get better pension for all of us? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's wrap up with our, <coughs> my guest uh, here for the Mankwa from the NPRA. Seth Abloso is with the Labour Policy International and uh, Engineer Ahin is a Labour Consultant. Engineer Arthur. Uh, uh, sorry, Arthur. I beg <laughs> your pardon. Uh, Hayford, let's, let's take your closing thoughts. It's said that the Labour deserves his wages. Uh, but in a situation where you find that issues like TNT and maybe transfer grants are still owed by government to teachers and all of that, is a big problem. Towards a better pension for all of us, what should the public do? Closing thoughts. I, I think um, the, the three-tier system has given us a best pension I mean, I mean for, for, for Ghana. Look, um, if you look at what we have under SNET, you allow only to declare your basic salary right. for the SNET contribution. Now, under the tier, tier, tier three, you are allowed to use your income. Okay. So technically, if you've got other income like other allowances, you could actually get up to 16.5% of that declared or consolidated salary okay. to be able to improve your pension. Right. So in, in the tier one, you, you, you get a monthly pension I mean, I mean from SNIT, and then you get a lump sum under the tier two. Even though the tier two is capped, now mm. it is it, the, the, the tier three is sort of open up, up to about 16.5. Mm. So if you're a worker today and you want to do more, and even enjoy the benefit, the tax relief now, mm. you can do 16.5% right. on your declared income. Wow. And then again, if you come to, come to the, um, those in the informal sector, there's also a window of opportunity given to them under their tier three, where they can actually contribute towards a personal pension plan. Mm. Now again, that plan gives them a savings account and then a pension plan that can be, re I mean, uh, redraw after five years. Right. So, I mean, mm. there's a lot of opportunities mm. and for them, what is used is your declared income. So you could tell the whoever is taking your trustee mm. any amount that you want to contribute, and that, that will be accepted. Mr. Abloso, yeah. it's, your, it's your turn now. Uh, single spine, uh, tier one, two, three, <laughs> pub, public safety, workplace safety. What are your closing thoughts for us this morning? Thank you. I think the regulator needs to be robust. In, in performing its functions. Secondly, it's important that for several years now, Ghana has not ratified ILO Convention 102 on mm. Social Security Convention, minimum standards. Mm -hmm. It's important that we, re we ratify that. Uh, so also is uh, Recommendation 202 of 2012, ILO Recommendation 202. That, that provides a comprehensive framework for social security and social protection mm. management, <laughs> and which enjoins us in this country to report annually 
And when we have challenges, the International League by organization comes to our assistance. Okay. It's important that, that, that we look at this. But above all, a lot really depends on us. And ILO Convention 158, which provides security of employment, okay. where you cannot terminate appointment without giving reason. Right. It's important that we ratify that also. Mm -hmm. I recall the Secretary General of the TUC mentioned this in May Day 2018. Mm -hmm. A year on, we haven't seen action on that. Right. But if we did that, there will be security of employment. Okay. Persons will blow the whistle wherever they are mm -hmm. when they see wrongdoing. Corruption will be attacked from the shop floor. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Ijinatha, what have you to say to work as, as closing thoughts today? Yes, I will say that and then you give me permission to make my requests. You know, I know your platform is big. Eh? Mm. For workers, and I'm speaking directly to workers, once you work, you must know that at some point in time, work will cease. Mm. So you need to make contribution towards your pension so that after you have retired, you can say goodbye to tension mm. and then welcome pension. pension. Mm. It's an extremely important thing. <coughs> and as you age, you will require <coughs> more money for, to keep your health. You will require more money to keep your house. And you need a lot of other you know, necessities of life as you age. Mm. So there's a need, whilst we are actively working, to ensure that you make a contribution. Don't give the excuse. Okay. as whether you are working in the formal sector or not in the formal sector. Wherever you are working from, no matter how little your income is, okay. it makes sense mm. to put some down for your good use in your old age. Mm. And then my request, uh, we have a road okay. from uh, Santé Mampon to <laughs> Kufiasi. <laughs> and the contractor has abandoned the job. <laughs> uh, he has abandoned the job and we are pleading with the sector minister mm. to come in another one from Adijuan to Aton okay. and then Busum Cheche to Bunso. Uh, you want and to be a road you know, minister now? Oh no, I'm a civil engineer. <laughs> so right. definitely so when your they, people they ask you, you to, to, mm. to intervene, I why see. not? Right. It's been captured in the budget mm. but we are pleading with the authorities that we are one district. We cannot be asking for everything but at least in this area they should come and help us. And but then the pressor pressor. Ours is not doing so. <laughs> the pressor pressor in Asante Mampon, the energy minister should should help. Wait. I'm using this platform because it's big and Wait. they listen to you. We, we hear you. Thank <laughs> you very much for uh, watching Hayford Amon Kwais, the manager of standards mm -hmm. and compliance at the National Pensions Regulatory Authority has joined us here, Hayford. Thank you very much. Uh, Seta Bloso is a labor consultant, executive director at the Labor Policy International Set. Thank you very much. Yes. And Engineer Ben Arthur is a labor consultant as well. Always a pleasure to have you, Engineer. Thank you, Thank you very much indeed. And uh, let me say a very special good morning to you, Reverend Jonathan Betty of the Ghana Education Service. You are stuck in Cape Coast at this point. Uh, good morning to you. And also, let's say, uh, while we're talking about roads, uh, the road from Support Junction to Jekiti. Uh, is, is bad. The DC promised us about two weeks ago or so that where well, we shall have uh, the road fixed in two months. That's what he said. I don't know how true that is, but he promised us last year. He's promised again this year. <coughs> Will politicians ever stop promising? I don't know. But we understand that the president is uh, arriving at the grounds uh, for the May Day celebrations. We'll bring you sights and sounds from there as workers mark this, this year's uh, event is uh, focused on, uh, well, they, they getting better pension for uh, all workers. And that's it. These are pictures, live pictures from uh, the venue at this point. And the president is set to arrive. And um, we will all uh, get, get those images to you. We would want to hear what the president will say, especially uh, NAPCO. Uh, the National Builders Corps, which was said to uh, have employed some 100,000 young people of this country. Also, you remember the 745,000 jobs were told were created under the agri sector. Yeah, all those figures will come to play. We shall also hear what the TUC would have to say in response to what the president says today. They, they will have requests, I'm sure. That's the Independent Square in your shot. And I'm sure they will have uh, a lot of... Uh, what do you call it, a uh, request to put out there. If you're a worker out there, happy Workers' Day to you. We love you. And I uh, would we'll be reading some of your messages as you've sent them through on our WhatsApp console. 
Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm sure we can safely take a break now and then cross over when the feed is ready for the uh, president to speak to the nation on Workers' Day. Welcome back and thank you very much. We'll cross over now to the Independent Square where my colleague uh, Daniel Opoku is standing by to give us a live update from the Independent Square. Daniel Opoku, over to you now. And Daniel Opoku is my senior colleague. He's at the Independent Square. There you go. And currently, the place built for the president and his entire team to sit, they have now moved to move under the Independent Square currently. Because of the rains, the situation is becoming a bit difficult. I have with me here Dr. Jassi Jofoyangsen, who is the organized labor rep for the National Pension Regulation Authority. And also I have with me Madame Efua Adobia, who is a planning committee for the Adobe Boy for this year's May Day celebration. Good morning, Dr. Jassi. Good morning, my brother. Be before I come to let me go to you. Efua, good morning. Good morning. Efua, it appears the situation is out of control. We realize that the workers outnumber the police officers. The organizers, what did you put together? Well, this is not the first time we are experiencing this. I've been part of this committee for the past 10 years. And so we cannot say it is out of place. But it's rather unfortunate that when the security people asked the workers to move forward, they did not consult the committee. We have a problem with that. So what will you be doing now? Oh, well, as it is now, we're just going to wait for the president's address. We're still talking to the security people to move the workers back so that we can listen to the, His Excellency the President's address. Right, before, I come, right, before I come to Dr. Nassim, we are looking at sustaining pensions. How feasible is it? What's the position of organized labor on this? Well, the position of organized labor is very simple. Pensions will have to be sustained because that is the future for the worker. The moment you hit your retirement age and with this era where people are living longer, i.e., the life expectancy is now on the higher side. So if there are no sustained pensions, then what it means is that post your working life, you are going to be in trouble. If God blesses you with another 30 years, 25 years, 40 years after your retirement, then it means virtually another working life in quotes or working generation without any means of livelihood. And that is why for us as workers, we think that at all costs, the issue of sustainability of pensions is one that we cannot afford to fail on. Right, but no, no, when did you realize this? When did organized labor realize this? Because consistently, people have retired and they have been given mega pensions for them. The answer is why people have lost their lives. Is it the case organized labor have failed workers? No, 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 not at all. Some may argue that it's late, but in truth, it's not late. If you remember, as far back as the early 2000s, when President Kufo was in power, organized labor agitated that look. The pensions as we had then was not the best for us, and that culminated in the setting up of a pensions review commission that ultimately came up with the three-tier pension arrangement through Act 766. And then the implementation of the act itself, organized labor has had to fight for it. You remember there were times that labor had to go on demonstrations, government even took us to court, and all that has culminated finally in the setting up of these tier two schemes and what have you. So the issue of pensions is an ongoing activity. We cannot resolve all the issues in a day, but for us, we need to keep on hammering on the issues and ensuring that we address all of them. At least for now, we can say that tier two pensions is basically being established properly. TPFA transfers have happened. We are now looking at some issues with SNITs. The MPI is also working. Through the agitation, there's now a regulator. In the past, SNITs was like a monopoly, but now there's a regulator that also checks the activities of pensions. Issues of unification of pensions to bring about fairness are all in the law. And labor is still fighting for all these things to happen. And it is not an easy fight. So labor has a long-term project to ensure that we have sustainable pensions that will cater for all. Thank you, very much. Dr. Now, before I let you go, this year's made this in terms of preparations and organizations. How many people have you built to be awarded this year? 
about 45 people will be awarded. Mm -hmm. well, what, from, coming from, from where? From different uh, labor unions. Mm -hmm. Not my union, but other unions will be, I know NAGRAT, I know TUC, and other unions will be awarded because the, the awardees come from the various unions. We, the uh, uh, May Day Committee, do not select the people, but we give opportunity to the various unions to select the kind of people they want, they feel that deserve to be awarded. Right. So about 45 people will be awarded today. Right. My final question to why is organized, why are your workers not marching this year? They are not processing, but rather they decided to go more or less like a demonstration from the Obra Sports Circle this Please, year. Please, I have, I have to uh, correct that erroneous impression. Right. It is not a demonstration. It's just a simple procession. You, as you know, you listen to Dr. Ba, who talked about the team, sustainable pension for all, the role of social partners. Pension is something that affects every worker. You go home and you realize that what you are, you are benefiting is so meager. Right. And so to draw attention to the team or to the importance of pension, there's the need to organize something like we did this year. We changed the format to have a procession from Obrasport to the venue so that more people will be asking questions. What, what, what is happening? Today is Workers' Day. Why are people, mentioned? Why are people marching? Right. Uh -huh. So then that will lead them to know the team and why it is important to focus on their pension. Okay. So, so it is not not it, we are not marching. Right, right we are not marching. Speech, Just right, right. after the speech, Dr. Bao will present a speech on behalf of Workers of Ghana and then His Excellency the President will also respond to our demand, whatever we are going to tell the President. Right. So that's the format for this year. Okay. Thank you very much, Ifua. You're welcome. Now, we, we just finished with um, the, the, one of the organizers for this year's May Day celebrations, Madame Ifua Adoboy, who is a key member for this year's May, May Day organizations. And she just told us that this year nobody is marching, no worker is going to march, because they had a procession from the brass water the circle to the Independence Square. Daniel Opoku. TV3 News, Independence Square, Accra. And that's my senior colleague there, Daniel, at the Independence Square. It's raining, and uh, I'm sure you do also remember our report from the Independence Square that the interface is in cracks 61 years on, but the president and the rest of the uh, working force are out there. We wish them well and uh, to be safe. But let's turn our attention to WhatsApp. A few of your comments says, hello, Senior Bright and Johnny. Since today marks Workers' Day, I want to find out from the finance minister why he ordered the Controller and Accountant General's Department not to pay arrears old teachers, Nesta from Hohoi. So they are TNT and everything uh, in arrears has not been paid. And, and a happy birthday to Nane Duo for real of a mom from, uh, this is from Yao in Achimota. And uh, another says, my dad worked at the UEW, the University of Education in Winneba for years, and he is in the house not receiving pension. Wow, that's sad indeed. Good morning, Johnny. Uh, Snit and workers. One, your panelists discussing Snit pension should advocate for a new law for workers to own Snit. Well, the Snit is owned by all of us, really, but they have advocated for uh, reworking of the law. Majority of the board members will be workers. This will make the recruitment of staff transparent and not by government. Uh, Johnson and Hiakpo, thank you very much for those thoughts. Good morning, TV3. I want to use your uh, medium to remind the EC that we, uh, those who help them in the referendum uh, the creation of the new regions have not yet been paid since uh, 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 today is Labor Day. Well, someone from the Northeast region, you are asking that, well, the easy pays your money. We're not supposed to be employed. We create, we can create jobs for others. Some are quite few. And Bonti Benjamin and Achebe Bwakwa says, as we celebrate our noble labor force for their sacrifices and commitment towards the progress of our beloved nation today, I pray that the good Lord will grant them the strength to do more for the nation as government also does its best for, to support them uh, at all times. Happy May Day to all of you. Ghost names indeed. It's create, loot and share. It happened at National Service Secretariat. A lot of people were captured, posted, but they never existed. Controllers should stop disturbing innocent workers. They should stop creating staff IDs and taking money from non-existing works and name uh, them as ghosts. Okay. Good morning, TV3. I'm wishing workers of uh, Carl Ghana Happy May Day and Abigail Ames from SOA in Winneba. Happy Workers Day to all the people in Dakrup. 
Dakrupe, I hope I got it right. I wish you well, Ibrahim Iwa. And you have worked hard toiling throughout and delivering your best, saluting you for the hard work you do. Wishing every worker the best of Workers' Day from uh, Mubarak Spectre. Please, a long time, it's been a long, uh, it's, it's, well, we need to restructure our educational sector to suit self employment. In fact, the master serving education can no longer help the growing population. Please, Ghana needs leaders and we need technical and vocational education. Uh, Agbe Peje in Ho. And uh, Johnny, you are discussing a wonderful topic, but the problem of petty traders are from the slit because they do not show much interest in their registration but are quick to register the white color job workers and then when these petty traders get older they become a burden to the white color workers Gideon from Kutubabi is raising a concern but tilapia has certainly got something to show us on workers it's a happy workers day but the laborer deserves his wages there you go and you can see the the map of Ghana being uh, constructed in full block and cement. There are three lanky, uh, hungry-looking uh, gentlemen working, one with a shovel, one with a trowel, one with a headpan, trying to get on the ladder. And they all look hungry, topless. And there's a foreman of work standing by the side, supervising. That's the National Builders Corps. Uh, it says, who? Labor Day without pay. Now, how can you work on a hungry stomach and expect to deliver any tangible results? By the way, it's almost 30 days since the Ghana Police Service told us that they know where the girls are. They've been asking questions, where are they? They have still not been found. And I'm sure you also know that the CID and the uh, BNI boss yesterday was kicked out and then his deputy has been put in uh, that acting position. Well, you want to connect the dots? I leave it to your good judgment. But know that if you can think it and your heart can believe it, you only can achieve it. As workers, they say, safe. Tomorrow is a working day. Don't overdo anything. We'll see you tomorrow. When the president finally speaks to the nation, we shall let you know, and we'll bring you all the live pictures from the Independence Square. But as you could tell, it's raining out there, so uh, there's, there, we're trying to rearrange the place to make it uh, feasible for the president to address the nation's stressling. We'll see you. Uh, when the president speaks to the nation. Love and peace. That we may build our nation strong to fight the cause of workers' rights, which are sing. Shall we please rise? This is our convocation song. Shall we please rise? That we may build our nation strong to fight the cause of workers. The last stanza, we shall unite as workers do. We shall unite as workers do. The union A. To how we make our solemn pledge to work. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Education under the theme Sustainable Pension for All, the role of social partners. Pretty shortly, the gathering will be addressed by Dr. Iaoba, the Secretary General of the TUC, after which the President of the Republic will be speaking. So now, uh, Dr. Iaoba will be speaking. Is the Secretary General of the TUC. Brother Chairman, His Excellency the President. His Excellency the Vice President, Senior Minister, Honorable Ministers of State, His Excellency Comrade Pedro Gonzalez, our special guests, leaders of organized labor, friends from the media, brothers and sisters, 
ladies and gentlemen. May Day is indeed a very, very special day for workers and unions all over the world. That is why we, the working people of Ghana, have gathered here in Accra and in all the regions to celebrate this memorable day. This May Day is very special because it coincides with the centenary celebration of the International Labour Organization. See. It is important to note that Ghana has been a member of the ILO since 1957. Ghana has since ratified 50 ILO conventions that have provided the basis for the rules, laws and regulations governing employment in the country. His, Your Excellency Nanado has joined us today with honorable ministers of state to celebrate this important day. We also have with us here Comrade Pedro Gonzalez, the Cuban ambassador to Ghana, Dr. John Ofori Tinkrain, Director General of SNIT, Mr. Hayford Atak Rufi, Chief Executive of Ghana Pensions Authority, Comrade Areski Mezu, the Secretary General of Organization of African Trade Union Unity, Brother Daniel Mann of Fradicabed Foundation, and other special guests. On behalf of the working people of Ghana, I would like to welcome our special guest of honor, His Excellency President Nana Kufuado, Honorable Ministers of State, and all our special guests to the National Parade. This year, May Day has provided another opportunity for us to reflect on working and living conditions of millions of Ghanaian workers in both the formal and informal segments of our economy. Mr. President, we still have here in Ghana hundreds of thousands of workers who are paid below the national minimum wage, which is currently just about 270 Ghana cities per month. Tens of thousands of workers are working as casual employees without employment contracts. In fact, some casual employees have worked for over 10 years. Tens of thousands of workers are denying their fundamental right to join unions because they could be sacked by their anti-union employers if they exercise that right. Telecom companies, hotels and restaurants are particularly notorious for this unfair labor practice. There are tens of thousands of young men and women who have been denied the right to annual leave and sick leave with pay. Some are forced to work overtime without pay. Children are being forced to work in very hazardous conditions on farms, on rivers, and at sea. Some female employees have been denying their reproductive rights to have children because their employment contracts could be terminated if they become pregnant. Unfortunately, some state institutions guilty of this crime against women. These are but a few of the challenges Ghanaian workers are facing every day in their workplaces. Mr. President, we in organized labor hold the view that these unfair labor practices are being perpetrated by some employers who know that the state institutions such as factories inspectorate, labor department, and national labor commission cannot enforce compliance because they don't have the resources. Mr. President, we are humbly appealing to you and your government to provide the necessary logistical, financial, and human resources to these state institutions to perform their duties effectively. There is also the need for a review of the laws governing employment because the current labor laws are not providing adequate protection for workers of Ghana, particularly in terms of job security, in terms of income security, and in terms of health and safety. 
We already made okay, a case at the National Tripartite Committee for a review of the labor laws, especially the National Labor Act, to protect the interests of workers of Ghana. We trust that government will provide the necessary support to the Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations, the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General's Department, and Parliament to facilitate the review process so that we can have a labor law that truly protects workers from the prevailing colonial labor practices in some workplaces. This year, we have decided to draw attention to the lack of access to pension. That is why we have selected the team Sustainable Pensions for All. Currently, Ghana's total working age population is estimated at 13 million. Just about 1.5 million of them have access to pension under SNIT. This means that over 11 million people do not have access to social security. This is not acceptable in a rich and proud middle-income country like Ghana. Something has definitely gone wrong in our economic and social policy. Mr. President, we would like to appeal to you to correct this flaw in our social policy. We are expecting concrete plans and a roadmap for universal pension coverage in Ghana in 2020 budget. Mr. President, low coverage is not the only weakness of our social security system. Another weakness is the payment of inadequate pension benefits, especially for pensioners under the SNE scheme. Currently, there are about 200,000 pensioners on the SNE scheme. It may surprise you to know that about a quarter of these pensioners are receiving just about 300 Ghana cities per month. This is woefully inadequate, given the health challenges all people have to contend with on a daily basis. This explains the high incidence of poverty and destitution among pensioners in Ghana. Mr. President, there is another flaw in our social security, that is inequality in pension benefits. We expect that there will be a policy to correct all this uh, during your term of office. Another shortcoming has to do with some kind of discrimination against women in terms of women's access to social security. This is another weakness that has to be corrected. These weaknesses in our pension system could be attributed to inherent flaws in the legislation governing social security, as well as failure of our social policy to recognize the needs of vulnerable people in our society. Mr. President, this has to be corrected. Pension analysts and actuaries are very quick to point to low salaries in Ghana as a cause of inadequate pension. So in 2017, organized labor constituted a technical committee to investigate the computation of pension benefits. The committee found that, yes, indeed, low level of pay is an important factor. But another important factor, which is contributing to significant which is contributing to low pensions, uh, has to do with the way pensions are computed. So in the last two years, organized labor has been engaging board and ma management of SNICs and MPRA on the computation of social security benefits. Mr. President, I'm very pleased to inform you that we are making very good progress. The chairman of the board of trustees of SNICs Dr. Adokufo, and the Director General of SNIT, Dr. John Ofori Tinkrai, have been very cooperative. The Chairman of the Governing Board of MPRA, Mr. Paul Simon Granting, and the CEO, Mr. Atakrufi, have demonstrated commitment to dialogue as a means of resolving all pension-related disputes. Organized labor will continue to engage SNIT and MPRA. We are confident that we can resolve all disputes in the spirit of cooperation, mutual respect, and social partnership. 
Mr. President, before I shift to another issue, let me mention one factor which is hindering progress in our pension system. And that has to do with the huge government indebtedness to SNITS and the second tier occupational pension schemes. We are aware that government transferred over three billion to public sector second tier schemes in 2018. But that was a small step in the right direction. The truth is that government still owes SNIT and second tier schemes millions, if not billions, of Ghana cities. We cannot expect our pension schemes to perform effectively and efficiently if government, which is the single largest employer with over 600,000 workers on its payroll, fails to pay social security contributions. If there is any factor that can lead to the collapse of our pension schemes, it is the persistent non-payment of social security contributions by government. Mr. President, once again, we are appealing to you to change this situation. Mr. President, after your last state of the nation address, we made a written submission to your office. In that submission, we drew your attention to some issues relating to a new container terminal, which is being constructed by MPS at Temaport. We understand that the Ghana government signed a 35-year contract with MPS in 2015, which will allow MPS to effectively monopolize the activities at the Toma port when they start operations at the new terminal in June this year. The contract was awarded to MPS without any competitive bidding. Our analysis show that when the new terminal commences operation in June, with the monopolistic rights given to MPS, Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority and other operators at the Thermal Port are going to lose huge revenues that may lead to the collapse of many container-related businesses. This will translate into massive job losses in the maritime industry. GPHA may declare over 1,400 workers redundant in 2019 alone. Mr. President, if the contract is not reviewed and MPS commences operation in the new terminal in June, Ghana will surely lose millions of US dollars in revenue, in addition to over $800 million granted to MPS in tax concessions as part of this deal. Once again, we would like to humbly appeal to you, Mr. President, to intervene as a matter of urgency to ensure that the contract between Ghana government and MPS is reviewed. We need an agreement which is mutually beneficial and fair to the good people of Ghana. Mr. President, as I approach the end of my statement, I would like to appeal to my fellow Ghanaian workers to continue to work very hard in spite of all the challenges to support the president's vision of Ghana Beyond Aid, which is going to be launched here today. Together with our social partners, let us prove to the world that Ghana can manage its own affairs without the intrusion of the International Monetary Fund. Lastly, Mr. President, you will recall that we call on you for your support when Comrade Kwasi Adramankwa, the current General Secretary of ITUC Africa, was detained in Zimbabwe a couple of weeks ago at the start of a duty tour to solidarize with trade union leaders who have been persecuted by the government of Zimbabwe. As soon as you personally intervened, Mr. President, he was released from detention to continue his work in Zimbabwe. On behalf of my brother Kwasi Edouard Mankwa and the TUC family, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you and your team at the Jubilee House and at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for your support. May the good Lord bless you and your government. In conclusion, Mr. President, what the working people of Ghana are demanding 
is a renewed social contract that guarantees adequate wages, that guarantees safe working environment, that guarantees universal access to pension, universal workers' right to freedom of association and collective bargaining, that guarantees protection from discrimination and forced labor, as well as total elimination of child labor and forced labor in all forms. We believe that Ghana has what it takes to protect workers' rights and to provide universal social protection, including universal access to pension if there is political will to do it. Thank you very much. Long live organized labor. Long live workers' solidarity. Long live Ghana. Chaboy! Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much, Doctor Anthony Yaoba, the Secretary General of the Trace Union Congress, Ghana. Thank you very much, sir. We shall call on the band to lead us, even as we all rise, humbly rise, to sing Yenara Yasasini. Yenara Yasasini. The band will lead us to sing. Thank you very much, Bunt. On this note, I will humbly call. Please be seated. We will invite. We will invite the Honourable Minister of Employment and Labour Relations. Okay, right. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, let the whole place be very quiet. Let the whole place be very quiet. Let's stand properly, even as we listen to the first gentleman of the land. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we listen to the speech of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana. Before then, we have the friend of labor, the Honorable Minister for Labor Employment and employment and labor relations, Honorable Ignatius Bafo Iwa, our own friend. Hey. Hey. His Excellency, the President of the Republic, His Excellency, the Vice President, the Chairman of TUC, Secretary General of TUC, Honorable Ministers of State, members of the Diplomatic Corps, chairpersons, and general secretaries of various labor unions, our gallant workers across the length and breadth of the country, our friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. Tobai! 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 Once again, and all too soon, May Day is here with us again, having had the privileged opportunity to celebrate this occasion with you, our cherished workers, for the third time running. Indeed, God has been good to us. Last year, we had the opportunity to join all workers in, of Ghana 
in Kumasi, the Ashanti Regional Capital, to celebrate the day which, among others, saw the unveiling for the first time the contemplated Nation Builders Corps, which eventually led to the formal launch of the program by His Excellency the President on the 16th of October 2018 to address graduate unemployment among female youth. This year, the theme for the celebration is Sustainable Pensions for All, the role of social partners. And I think, Mr. President, this team couldn't have come at any better time than now. A lot is being done on the pension front, including the continuous, but most importantly, government's constructive engagement of both the formal and informal sector workers towards a sustainable pension regime in Ghana. The National Pensions Regulatory Authority is, on, is also continuously being strengthened and I can assure you, without any equivocation, Mr. President, that the NPRA as a regulator has taken its rightful place on the pensions front. People's pension funds are very, very, very safe. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to implore you, whilst I invite the humble servant of the state the man who has passion for workers, the most hardworking and loving father of our dear nation, the president of the state, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, to humbly address us this morning. So, Your Excellency, Let's remain silent and listen to His Excellency the President. I beg you. Mr. Vice President, Senior Minister, Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Ministers and Deputy Ministers of State, Chairperson of the Board, General Secretary of the Trade Union Congress, Union Leaders, Workers of Ghana, Nanano Mime Nanda and other traditional rulers, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to have the opportunity to be amongst you again on this special day, the third of my presidency, that is set aside to celebrate workers and work across the globe. Today is the International Day of Solidarity for all working people. And I say Ghanaian workers, I go. I do not think we exaggerate if we say that work is at the center of all human life and human existence. We spend the first 20 years or so of our lives preparing for work. We then spend the next 30 to 40 years in formal work. And if we are lucky, we spend the last 20 or so years in retirement. The quality of this period of retirement depends very much on how we manage the time we spend in work. I know I state the obvious, but I do want to make the point that I do not need to be persuaded about, about the importance of work and the circumstances in which we work. I also want to reiterate the fact that we are all in it together, whether it is in management or government or on the shop floor. The project 
of our existence succeeds if we work together and we pull together. Our nation at Ghana at 62 remains very much a work in progress and lots of things remain to be done to improve upon the quality of our lives in all three stages. The period of preparation towards work, the period during which we work, and the period during which we take a deserved rest from work. The lopsided nature of things in our country is just demonstrated by the statistic quoted elo eloquently in the speech by the General Secretary of the Trades Union Congress. That is, the workforce in our country is estimated at about 11, about 13 million, and those in formal work number about 1.2 million. The government of Ghana employs about 600,000 of this number, and more than 80% of all government revenue is spent on the remuneration and conditions of service of those of us in the group. Very few of us, among the 600,000 on the government payroll, are satisfied with our circumstances. And I'm sure we have all heard of some of the main sources of unhappiness among the litany of complaints read out by the representatives of organized labor. In the 28 months that it has been my honor and privilege to be the president of our country, I've been as candid as possible with the people of Ghana, even if sometimes the truth has been unpleasant. Let me try and bring out a few well-known facts of our condition. I believe there's con some consensus on what we all want for ourselves and for our country. We want a healthy, educated and skilled population. We want well-paid and satisfying jobs. And we want a well-developed network of infrastructure in the country. In 62 years, we have not managed our affairs to enable us to have the money to deal with the deficit in our infrastructure development without borrowing money. I suspect that even if we spent 100% of all government revenue on remunerations for the 600,000 or so people on the public payroll, there will still be dissatisfaction with conditions from some people. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe it is time we face reality and start asking ourselves some of the difficult questions. Development remains our collective responsibility and aspiration. Should we continue to pay greater attention on improving the conditions of the few who are in jobs, or should we concentrate on creating the atmosphere for more jobs to be generated. For years, we all said many public officials were pushed into corrupt practices because they were so badly paid. Salaries and conditions of service have been improved for many, and we have not seen the equivalent improvement in the quality of the work they do. This year, the theme for our May Day celebration is sustainable pensions for all, the role of social partners. <coughs> the theme takes us to what I identified as the, the third stage of our work-centered existence. It assumes that we have acquired the skills needed for the life of work, and we have jobs, and can look forward to a time of satisfying retirement. Everyone knows the critical contribution, contribution of labor to the production process, economic growth, and sustained development. It is important that the dignity of labor is maintained throughout retirement. The passage of the National Pensions Act 2008 ushered Ghana into a new pension regime characterized by a three-tier pension scheme. As we all know, this scheme is made up of a basic national social security scheme, tier one, an occupational pension scheme, tier two, and a profit and fund and personal pension schemes, tier three. Currently, 
pension fund assets are reported to have grown from 5.1 billion, representing 6.75% of GDP in 2012, to 20.8 billion, representing 10.1% of GDP in 2017. Fund assets have therefore kept growing since the implementation of the three-tier pension scheme. This has provided an opportunity for private sector pension operators or companies to thrive. In 2018, the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, NPRA, registered and licensed 30 corporate trustees, 77 pension fund managers, and 17 pension fund custodians. This rapid growth in total pension assets can be attributed mainly to increased private sector participation in the pension sector, the availability of sound investment guidelines, and an independent regulatory authority, NPRA, that oversees and ensures compliance with good practices. In addition, Tier 3 offers opportunities for workers in both the formal and informal sectors to make voluntary contributions. This is a most welcome innovation into our pension regime. Indeed, formal sector workers who contribute to Tier 3 schemes have an added advantage and that their pension obligations are deducted before tax. <coughs> I look forward to all Ghanaian workers recognizing the importance of pensions and, giving, and gaining confidence in the sector. The current system gives the individual worker the opportunity to have absolute control over his or her pension through effective and transparent management. As I told you last year, over 3 billion CDs, i.e. 3.1 billion CDs of pension funds, funds that had been outstanding for six years, and about which TUC had been loud, loudly complaining, were transfer, transferred in 2017 <coughs> from the temporary pensions fund account, TPFA, at the Bank of Ghana to the appropriate occupational pension schemes. Pension fund managers and trustees have a lot of work to do to build and retrain the trust of workers. For many people, this is all new and uncharted territory. There are understandable anxieties that must be assuaged by working with the highest level of diligence and honesty in managing the resources entrusted to them. <coughs> I acknowledge that there are unresolved issues with the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNED, and the NPRA. I've asked the Minister for Employment and Labor Relations to liaise with SNED and NPRA to bring finality to all outstanding issues in the next three months. In much the same way that we should build trust between workers and the new private pension companies, it is equally important that there is trust between workers and the state-established SNEC. <coughs> I'm informed that the Ministry of Finance has arranged for payment of 200 million CDs and the bond of 700 million CDs towards the retirement of the arrears owed to SNCC. This will leave arrears of 200 of 800 million CDs, which will be included in next year's budget. <coughs> we will build a robust economy and a, pros a prosperous society when we put in place a pension scheme for all workers. For far too many of our people, the end of their lives is marked by poverty. 
Too many people either have no pensions at all or have inadequate pensions to meet the needs of old age. In the informal sectors of the economy especially, most people work without any thought to pension coverage. And when they no longer have the strength to work, their lives become miserable. Our societies have changed. Old people can no longer regrettably count on their children to look after them in their old age. I hope and pray that we never lose the Ghanaian values of accepting responsibility for looking after our old people. But that should not stop us from organizing things to ensure independence and dignity to the old during retirement. Since about 90% of workers operate in the informal sector, we must focus our attention on extending access to that sector in compliance with the National Pension Law. At the moment, government efforts are on course to establish a cocoa farmers pension scheme. This trend will be extended to other workers, worker groups in the informal economy. Fellow countrymen and women, another way of widening the, end, the pension base is, of course, to reduce unemployment. We're working on an economic transformation agenda through the various job creation initiatives, such as planting for food and jobs, one district, one factory, the industrial stimulus package, planting for export and rural development, private sector support schemes, which are beginning to bear fruit and should start reducing unemployment and provide opportunities for citizens to work, earn higher incomes and contribute to their pensions. A year ago, I made special mention of the importance of the TVET sector in equipping our young people for the world of work. I promised that we will back the talk with action. I'm glad to be able to report that we have made important progress. We are funding for 21 state-of-the-art TVET centers. Parliamentary approval has been given for all 34 NVTI centers to be upgraded, retooled, and curricula improved and teachers trained. It also includes the building of two new foundries and two machine-making factories and the completion of NVTI headquarters. We have also got parliamentary approval for all 10 technical universities and technical institutes to be re-equipped, re and rehabilitated. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, we know the areas of sustainable job creation and we know that we need well-trained technicians to build our country. We are making realistic and effective efforts to ensure that we produce those that generate work and pensions. I also wish to encourage our social partners, employers and enterprise owners to, compl to comply with existing pension regulations and support their staff to contribute to pension schemes. We should all spread the news about the importance of pensions and the structures in place to ensure transparent and effective management of pension funds. Ladies and gentlemen, government is determined to consolidate further the relations between the social partners in the post-IMF era. That is why on 18th April 2019, government signed a landmark social partnership agreement with organized labor represented by the Trades Union Congress, the Ghana Employers Association and government represented by the Ministers for Finance and Employment and Labor Relations to provide a media for building a sense of cohesion, trust, self-management, frank and open discussions to champion the course of development towards realizing the vision of a Ghana beyond it. <coughs> Government 
is committed to a new social culture that promotes social dialogue and economic management and in the making of public policy. It is also to show, assure you, our workers and businesses, that you are our true development partners and your ideas are critical in my government's model for economic management and development. I will soon inaugurate a social partnership council with equal representation from the three social partners. I'm very confident that this new approach to economic management and public policy making will foster even greater cooperation and trust among our partners. Together, we can achieve a more stable economy, peace at the labor front, and prosperity for the good people of Ghana. Before I conclude, there's one important matter I have to address. At last year's May Day celebration in Kumasi, I informed organized labor and the country about my intention to establish a multi-stakeholder committee to develop to develop a charter and a strategy for the vision of Ghana beyond aid. The committee chaired by the senior minister as the ministers for finance, planning, local government and rural development, employment and labor relations, monitoring and evaluation and information as members. Trade Union Congress's own Secretary General, Dr. Yaba, and its Vice Chair, Mrs. Philomena Sampson, are also members. The leadership of the Association of Ghana Industries, Private Enterprise Federation, Ghana National Association of Teachers, Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and National Union of Ghana Students Notes, among others, also played important roles in the work of the committee. The committee has worked assiduously, tirelessly, to produce a charter and a strategy document which will guide our march towards Ghana beyond age. And I'm happy to outdoor this document today here at the May Day celebration in Pakistan. On behalf of the people of Ghana, I wish to thank the Ghana Beyond Aid Committee for the good work done. Ghana Beyond Aid is setting our nation on an irreversible pathway of prosperity. With the blessing of the Almighty and our collective effort, we will march boldly from poverty to prosperity so that we can create the Ghana our forefathers envisaged, the current generation aspires to have, and our posterity will be proud to inherit. A Ghana which is self-sufficient and prosperous, governed according to the rule of law, respect for human rights and individual liberties, and the principles of democratic accountability, the Ghana of our dreams. I thank you for your attention and congratulate all workers on this occasion for their hard work over the past year and crave your continuous support in the national development effort. Long live Ghana. Long live the workers of Ghana. Aiko, may God bless us all in our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. Give His Excellency a big top boy, top boy, boy, boy. Mama na na ose, ose. Mumbo na na ose, ose. Mumbo na na ose, ose, ose ye, ose. Mumbo na na. Your Excellency, thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. We will respectfully invite leadership of organized labor to go and congratulate His Excellency for his speech. Only leadership. Only leadership. Leadership of organized labor. This 
will be followed by the veterans. Yeah. The veterans. Organized labor is made up of communication workers union, union of industry, commerce and finance workers, timber and wood workers union, Ghana Private Road Transport Union, Ghana Mine Workers Union, Local Government Union, Ghana Railway Workers Union, Public Services Workers Union, Health Services Workers Union, Construction and Building Material Workers Union, Teachers and Educational Workers Union, General Agriculture Workers Union. We will call on veterans. Please, veterans. 